Hello. Can see your ear. Hello. You could see my ear. Yeah. I could Hello, see. Daniel Ira. How are you? Daniel Ear. Uh. Um. Good. Good. How are you? Good. Yeah. We're a little stressed. Yeah. Tense. Yeah. Uh, Hence to be honest. The uh, title of the uh, video. Yeah, but to be honest, uh, I don't know why it's always like a default to say good, 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 good. Always. We've and been a for little. For us in Spanish. Bit, yeah. Buenos días, ¿cómo está? Muy bien, gracias. Yeah, it's like very good. Very good, Not thank you, good. and you. Yeah. Um, it's just a proper way to answer, I guess. Yeah. But I think it's like a rhetorical question, kind of. Like um, a, a question that you don't really answer. You just... Yeah, you're not... Yeah. And people are not... People immediately don't want to know how how are you. Yeah. No, I told you that that has Horrible. happened to me. It's like, oh, people hey, have how been are like, you? Hey, Horrible. What oh my have God. you been up to? And I'm like, oh, these and these and that. And they just yeah, like... Too much, go. too much. They're like, okay. They just wanted to uh, and even do a small really intro. know you that good. So can yeah. you... Please not. But uh, we've been stressed because uh, Chili has been sick. Yes. So she has a cold. Um, and um, colds, uh, particularly uh, the uh, the virus that you could, you know, that puppies can get when they're very little, um, are, you know, very stressful because it could be life-threatening when they're little, especially if they haven't gotten their shots yet. That she, is, She has the shots. Yeah, yeah, she did. Um, but that happens here in Colombia quite a bit. Um, it it hits the uh, puppies very very hard. Uh, so um, she may have that virus, but thankfully, because she has her shots, she's able to deal with the virus. So she just has like a ton of snot and just sneezing all the time. Um, I hope we could get that shot so we wouldn't be that worried that's stressful yeah. that's stressed about it yeah because yeah it's but been... you never like to see like a puppy just um be sick so you've been very diligent and have taken her to have um i don't know how to call it like uh, respiratory uh, breathe, breathe uh, respiratory therapy yeah well she she just has like um not a humidifier to... what do you what do you call Nebulizador. that i don't know how to call it. um um, let's you see. know, they just stick that vapor thing, like a vaporizer thing with uh, some medicine, medicine yeah. uh, in a crate, in a little covered crate, so she can breathe in all the medicine that she needs to breathe so that she can get... Nebulizer? Nebulizer, okay. Yeah. So she can get all her uh, snot out. Yes. Um, but she's been super low energy, you know, based on on her usual self. She's been kind of these past days low energy, but she's getting better because yeah. she she has. I mean, aside from her being sick, she just um, and we didn't know about this. I've had before Chile. I've I think I've shared in my life like five dogs, like you know, time with five dogs. Um, not one of them had reverse sneezing, mm -hmm. which is like a horrifying thing because the first time I. I, I heard her. I thought she was choking because she too. eats yeah. like she eats super quick. We've had to find like different bowls for her so that she can eat slower. Um, but her like snout is so small that she can fit into anything that where you put her food. So she's just, you know, she's had to learn how to eat slow. Now she does. Yeah. Now she's gotten better. And that bowl you got her in the end is is, is a lot better. Yeah. But um. Which but is a slow thought. feeder, but in her size, because we had a slow feeder that was yeah, like a pool too big. for her. Yeah, I could take so a, a she bath would, in there. Sometimes she would have like all of her four paws inside while oh, yeah. eating because it was so big for her. Yeah. So we thought she was choking, which doesn't make it better or anything, but um, which is also pretty weird just to hear that sound. But no, apparently they just sneeze inward. They kind of snort when they're trying to sneeze which is very strange um and we read about it and nobody knows why that happens or why it's certain... no, it's just like the way they yeah you're just sneeze. genetically you know i don't know she that's what she does so it's really scary when she's trying to sneeze like for example at night but what she does is just have like a snort attack so that's you know and and it's like 
10 seconds of well, hearing her like plus uh, the cold that she has now yeah because now she kind of um i mean when she sneezes, she has a lot of like mucus yeah so she's like stuck yeah here, yeah which has been very hard Oof. for us yeah but we gotta give her medicine um some medicine and you're taking her to do her therapies every day yeah every day she's doing that till saturday so she had quite a bit um well the first batch because that's what she well let's me. hope I mean, that she's it's the only batch yeah, yeah let's let, hope let's it's hope. the only one but let's hope but she's okay she's i think she's getting better yeah and the mornings early mornings are tough on her yeah i think because of the cold maybe yeah and she's been sleeping with a like a water uh how do you call that like a i don't know water bag like yeah. a warmer yeah it's in like a little uh it's sealed so it's oh yeah it's, yeah. In it's like safe a, for pets so. yeah yeah yeah. so so she's fine but just so that she can sleep like super warm yeah because we tried my belly a... <laughs> and no no you move a lot yeah we also tried sweaters. I think we're gonna yeah. stick to that tonight. Well, yeah, but yeah, she doesn't like. But to she's wear so anything. dramatic when she has the sweater on. She walks as she didn't know how to walk. I mean, oh she's no, just like, no, 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 no. She walks like uh, you know how little like kids. Like she's in pain. <laughs> you know those those videos of like little kids when they're wearing like their first winter coat, mm -hmm. and they they just they look like um like a turtle walking on two legs. Yeah. Um, or like when you put those new like shoes for dogs for the snow because they need it so they don't burn their Okay, pot. I didn't, I wasn't familiar with that. Oh, but they put like shoes and it's so funny because they just like dogs. lift the paws because they can't walk. Okay. They just like feel yeah. weird. So. Some dogs though. I mean, you no, never see dogs. a husky with like paw, like. I guess it depends. Well, they're on built that. for snow. I don't they, know. They're genetically built to like live in snow. So. Well, yeah, but they are also they have been domesticated for too yeah, many years. Do you that think they lose do. that? Do you think they lost? I think sometimes I they don't do. Know. Yeah, it's like a hunting dog. Yeah, but I think they dogs are kind of resilient. have an instinct, instinct, but they're not like good hunters. Just you, know, you, you see like born. stray dogs on the streets, and they can't. They can take anything. Dogs are mm. just Jesus Christ. They're just machines of like living like they just you know there's a there's a um a driving force to live that i think it's unmatched in like a dog i don't know anyways daniel era yes anyway. we're we're hoping that um that she gets out of this no and, we know uh, she's gonna get yeah out. yeah yeah and she's she's all good she's sleeping right now behind us so. yes with a warmer with yeah the warmer. yeah she she's sleeping a little bit more than than what she would usually sleep yeah but um let's hope everything is is okay um uh, for today just to try to hard pivot um we're gonna do i i scribbled it before like um some minutes ago because i really wanted to see if i could get that that uh gesture Mm. So, we're calling this. What did we end up calling the video? Tension. Tension. I don't know. Tension in composition. I guess. Maybe. Tension in composition. Tension in yeah. composition. Let's. Is it, so that that's pretty good. So where is the tension coming from? Because, um, you know, right now it just seems like a. I don't know. Could you tell what it is? Yeah. Yeah. It's a laying figure well, with a, an arm. Yeah. I mean, it, it was it was a reclining pose. This was you lying on the floor, and Chili was actually right here. Oh, I don't really? Know if you remember, yeah. But I I edited Chili out. Not no. that you know, not that it would you know, everything is better with Chili in. By but for this particular painting, I I edited Chili out so I can have this kind of uninterrupted diagonal here, and I obviously instead of being reclining. I um, I'm using the image as a vertical, and as soon as I saw it as a vertical, it's actually more you know like more organic. So your back is doing like a curved thing, you know, where the spine sort of curves, and then your butt kind of sticks out. But I don't think that's what I wanted. That's what you would see in the reclining pose, but that's not what I wanted. I or wanted painting, almost yeah, like um, yeah, not in life, 
No, 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 no. I, I was going to say that I, that's what you want I'm for the painting. I am appreciative of your spine <laughs> and the butt sticking out. No, I'm not out. saying so, that. I'm just God saying. God bless you. No, I'm just saying that, I mean, we talk a lot about how not because you have it in the reference, you have to do exactly. it like that. So that's why I was like emphasizing on yes. for the painting. So you yes, decided exactly. for the painting yeah. that you wanted something I think it, it, I thought it would be different. interesting, right. And um, so I wanted that diagonal. Because I imagined it could be like um, almost like a Franz Klein sort of, you know, um, jutting gesture. Um, and um, it's particularly tense because uh, there's not a ton of room, if you, if you think about it, right here. And up. Which that's going to, exactly, that's going to be the, um, that's not your elbow. That's a cast shadow, which is kind of nice, I feel. Mm -hmm. um, but your elbow would be right here. And um, and the one you pointed out that's probably the most obvious, just having a hand just almost like touching, barely the touching end of the paper, yeah. up here and very, very close to here also. So um, that is almost like unnecessarily tense. You know, it's like if you have like a whole image that is just pointing upwards, just, you know, if, if you understand, sure, this is going to be like the the sort of knot of the image. This is where everything um, kind of comes together and you can stay here for a long time. But you're also very aware that, you know, it's almost like geyser-like, that it, it just comes from, you know, the bottom and then, you know, um, uh, finds some sort of refuge, you know, in the upper uh, left corner. So it's very it's a very weird image to try to solve because um essentially, you know, if we think about it in halves, like the upper half of the of of the uh painting is where almost everything is happening, everything in the sense and this is a weird thing. We we almost always you know think that because there is a you know representation like a a human representation then that for sure is hierarchical and that's obvious that's quite obvious but sometimes it's actually really strange because having a figure doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be the hierarchy in a painting um, sometimes figures have to compete with um, uh, more abstract spaces let's say with abstract geometric shapes for example that can be way more powerful than just having like a, a a human being represented in your image. Um, so, you know, uh, putting like a hand here or like um, this kind of burrowed uh, portrait here doesn't necessarily mean that that's your point of interest and everyone's going to go there. It just happens to be that there's like a, a really nice sort of swirling pose here um, that it that is going to grab your attention. And the other thing is there's nothing here nor here. There's like these two spaces if you um, think about it, uh, in the in the left, you know, say l let's say the foremost left uh, side of the uh, picture, and the um, uh, lower left, and then the upper right part of the picture, they're somewhat symmetrical. These weird shapes here that don't have anything. They're just going to be, um, hopefully, a space where this, you know, diagonal, this this burst can, you know, reside in. But aside from that, they don't do much. They're just going to, you know, signal what is happening with the contour. Uh, they're going to make that way more evident. Um, but that's it. But they're also going to be very powerful in their own right. So the fact that you have these, when you say like empty spaces or voids or inter interstitial spaces, it doesn't immediately mean that um, whatever is in between the spaces, so let's say this shape, that's going to be the uh, interesting one. That's immediately going to um, have a um, hierarchy over the rest. It doesn't. It doesn't work that way. I've seen paintings where spaces can be incredibly dramatic, like empty spaces, and you're just you're you. They have a powerful draw to them um, that even though those spaces are um, ultimately inhabited by a figure or they are 
Um, there's also uh, some sort of uh, other subject matter occupying that space. It doesn't mean that those spaces are are dead. You know, they, the the fact that they are empty doesn't mean that they are um, lacking in in strength to communicate. Um, a void is is a powerful thing. It's a very very powerful thing. So your eye will be drawn to it for sure. Yeah, because yes, I'm Daniel sorry. Lira. No, because I was gonna say that they also. I mean, they are as important as the figure because they do alter yes. the reading of, course, of the yes. image. And I was also going to say about the tension that yeah. you were just describing. Yeah. The fact that the hand is so near the upper left corner mm -hmm. because of the occident occidental way we have of reading. Yeah. It starts with a very tense oh, yeah. reading. But then the spaces between, like, I would say add tension because it's yeah. like... Tension space, tension space, and then you go like that till you tra like traverse the image yeah. in a diagonal. It's almost like, I forget, what is that in literature, in books, what is that called when you have that first letter that's actually like a beautifully ornate, mm. like super large letter? Um, I, I know that has a name, but um, I forget what it is. Um, but yeah, that, what you're describing could be that. So uh, it would be the O in Once Upon a Time, but it's like an enormous O. So maybe and this one, historiated initial. Okay, maybe, so yeah. It's an initial and enlarged letter at the beginning yeah. of a paragraph, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so, I'm sorry, it, but... Called? I know that it had a name, but I never really... Historiated initial. Okay, I'm so like the one in my brain. Okay, punch that's very nice. I'm sorry, we're talking like super... Uh, On top of each other? Formal. No, we are oh, always what? talking like that. What, what? <laughs> but... No, that we were talking about something super serious and I just, I was thinking about Spongebob because that's... Oh, the S is like that? No, and when they're uh, writing oh, an essay... Go for it, go, go, go and for And they it, just yeah. like, you see them like writing and writing and writing and you think that they're just like doing the whole essay. Yeah, And what time happens? passes and they just do the ornate letter. Oh, beautiful. So. I love that. <laughs> oh, this should be i uh, I'm, I'm sure somebody has done that. Where, wouldn't you love it if it was a page that you would think would hold like a story or the beginning of a story and all you see is that first letter? Look, so it's, it's I mean, I love that. I, I was going to say I love oh, that. Oh, like the? It's the? a the. Oh, yeah. great. But it is amazing because so, uh, so you, you see him like, yeah, yeah, and he just like sharpens the pencil like yeah. 10 times perfect. until it's perfect. That's and you just see, brilliant, see them. Feel. Yeah, like yeah, doing and doing and doing and doing, and yeah. then it's like <laughs> no, that's perfect. That like they blow the paper. Yeah, and it just says the, the. perfect. So yeah, perfect. Because I was imagining, you know how you always think that you have to punch it up to like art so that it becomes weighty or or it has like some gravitas or something. So I was imagining like a show, you know, where all these like e like all these pages seem to be you could like enumerate them too but um uh but all these pages could point to like a um like a, a conceptual story being told <laughs> and um but they're just that first letter and that would be awesome but then you know i didn't know no spongebob did it yeah did it and, and now did it it's like perfect. oh no it's perfect it was perfect it's like there's no need to have a show or to make it about art or to make it about you know art with like a capital a with i mean i have to say what it was it historiated capital something like that okay. yeah i forgot historiated already, letter let's see it historiated letter Let oh, okay good job initial initial let's say that historiated initial i guess yeah i think so it doesn't have to become like art with like a big ornate. Well, a. SpongeBob is art. I know, but I'm Not referring to like the, anyone. the pompous big big A art. Yeah. Uh, when SpongeBob did it brilliantly. Hmm. So, you know, what else is there to say if it's I'm gonna done show you that really well? Um, the episode, episode? I would tonight. Love to. Okay, it's so. one of the um, early ones, early seasons. It is early. Yeah, I don't know how early it is, but let's yeah check very quickly because it's. So very, why are you doing that? No, wait, because it's a very important... Oh, okay. But I, I'm, no, I'm not going to ask you to multitask. I'm just going to describe the uh, palette. No, wait. Okay, so I'll wait. Yeah. Please, I mean... Time stands still for Bob. Uh... SpongeBob. You know there's a new game like Bikini Bottom, like the one that we played. Really? 
Yeah, it came out. It is called Procrastination Stay. Season 2. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's probably in... I forget um, where Spongebob is. Netflix? Well, I want to know the number. Episode number? Oh, but that's easier to find. Procrastination. So, episode 37, season 2. That's so crazy. 37 episodes. Um, Great. Yes, we'll, so we're going to uh, we'll watch it. We'll search for it, for so sure. If someone wants to watch it too. Oh, we'll do a live um, a drinking... Um, I think we couldn't. What's that? We couldn't do that because of the... I mean, if we're showing a SpongeBob episode. We either lose many followers or no, no, we no. just No, no, not because up. of the followers. I mean, we would be huge. <laughs> but, no, I'm talking about uh, the like the rights, like the copyright of SpongeBob. Like you oh, can't no. What you do in those, in those things, like I, I, I forget. I don't know if people on Twitch do it and it's fine, but... A lot of people do like movie nights, like um, um, streaming movie nights where everyone just watches the whole, like you and your audience, you watch the movie and you just comment on the movie. I think I've uh, read sometimes that they just like flip the image. Yeah, I wonder. But I, I don't know. I don't I, know. I have no idea. Or they Me have neither. it without audio or something. Or they don't monetize because I think you can Maybe. show things, yeah. but you don't Maybe. monetize. The yeah, video, that's also but... that's also true. So, uh, yeah, but we're not going to do either of those. No. Things, <laughs> um, so. Uh, so, as I was saying, well, actually, it's good that you interrupted me because I don't oh, know I if. Didn't, I'm sorry. I don't if know. I interrupted you. No, no. You interrupted you're not you doing again. it again. Um, I don't know if, if I'm going to. Um, I wanted to do have this because I described it as a Franz Klein. And I can't say Franz Klein without thinking I'm going to do like a super dark shape because. Why else would I mention Franz Klein? So in my mind, I thought Franz Klein, and then I thought, well, I have to use black. It's just like, I have to. But um, the painting I did of Fer, that was like this drawn and then painting, painting slash drawing. The choir one? No, the one that she's uh, she's uh, with her Oh, the sitting one. Sitting yeah, down, the sitting kind of, pose. Uh, yeah. Kneeling down. Yes. Um, that I, I started to use um, a palette that I haven't used for like a while now, yeah. which is the primary palette of uh, made up of um, titanium white, bismuth yellow, uh, quinacridone magenta, and it, should, it used to be cobalt teal. That used to be my gaudy uh, blue. That is uh, horrendous. But I mixed it up with cobalt turquoise. You Which should do that. It makes absolutely no difference to be 100% <laughs> honest. It's almost like the same thing. One of it one is like a tiny bit more towards blue and one of it is tiny bit more towards well, green. Well, let's say it but does it's not the same thing. make a difference for you. No. Difference for you because you do not use it that regularly. Yes, but I would no. say that for example, if you change the earth that I use, the earth. Yes. It, I would see the difference. Oh, for sure. So I guess that there's a lot of people that work yes. that are way more sensible to that. Yeah. Like palettes. I'm gonna to say though that those teal pigments and turquoise. The... They're kind of close. Okay. A little bit. Okay. I'm gonna say that there's the the difference is negligible. So if I you, haven't looked. If at... you have to change raw umber. Yeah. Oh. For another. No, oh, I would. That's I would what use, I was trying to say. Uh, Castle Earth. Yeah, but uh, what I was trying to say Which is, is like the same. you can see that they're like slightly similar. Oh, yeah, they would be. But they like feel the, very yeah, different. Castle Earth so. is blacker, so it's more neutral than you know. You 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 realize how much more earthier raw umber is, which by itself you kind of think of it as a very neutral earth. But you see how much more earthier it is once you put it against Castle Earth, which is <laughs> exactly. far blacker, far more neutral. So, so maybe someone that does not use it that regular yeah. would say they are like interchangeable. Yeah. But they're not. They're not. So, so Daniel Lyra. Uh, so we can use that palette. Mm -hmm. I think it would be cool to use that palette. Now, there are sacrifices that are going to happen by using that palette because... It's a very strange palette, to be honest. I, people are seeing it. Yes, they um, are. Because, because uh, traditionally what I do, I mean, this may not be what other people do, but when I use uh, primaries, I always have like this, 
I don't know. It's almost like a, a, um, a nature of a palette that in my mind, it's kind of like set. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, just steering from that, from that constant, it's a little weird for me. And what do I mean by something that is already set for me? So when I do my primary color palette, I'll use a, you know, titanium white, which is going to be my lightest color in the palette in terms of value. Then I'm, you know, I, for the past couple of years, I've been favoring bismuth yellow as my kind of like a yellow green or like a cat lemon yellow, maybe. But um, I favor uh, bismuth yellow. So I have... Um, Titanium white, bismuth yellow. For my red, it's very weird because I know that for for a primary color palette to be able to achieve the broadest of possibilities in terms of mixing, you have to have like some sort of magenta in there. It shouldn't be like a um, a red orange like cat uh, like cat red. Um, why not? Because you're not going to be able to get violets or purples. They're going to gray out if you start from like a cat red because there's so much orange in there that once you mix blue with that cat orange, that cat red, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. the orange in the red, and I know this sounds weird, but there's, there's, think of it as almost like you're, you know, it, it literally is like a color that exists within that red. Um, the orange in that red, when mixed with blue, because they're complementaries, they're going to gray out. So you're you're not going to be able to have high chroma um, violets or purples. So if you want something that lets you, you know, achieve broader mixes, you kind of have to mix a magenta. If you're thinking of like a soul red in a primary color palette, and this is already weird for me because I always favor cat red. I, I don't care if I can't get purples or, you know, violets because I don't care. I, you know, I, I, I see a primary color palette as something very small. So if it gets a little bit smaller because of my choice in red, I never care. And the thing is, I always, I've always liked cat red. So that is just some, like a color I have attraction to. So it's not this exercise that I'm doing as a colorist in saying like, what can get me the most, like the broadest results that, you know, is, is something that I don't pay attention to. And I'm consciously uh, sacrificing that for using cad red. So the thing is, I always like the fact that I have cad red because it's a mid value red. So it's inherent value. So we're thinking just how light or dark the color is, is mid tone. So we have something light, so we have our lightest, then something light, then something mid-tone. And then, you know, my workhorse blue, I've said it forever. It's the blue that I've never taken out of my palette. I've taken other blues out, but the blue that I've always kept is ultramarine, which is a very, you know, when you speak to painters about that blue, they're going like, oh my God, you're so boring. But I love it. I absolutely love it. So one of the things that I like is that my palette inherently has... Um, you know, my lightest color, then a light color, then a mid-tone, and then a dark, then my darkest dark. So I have a big range in value. And that for me is like more important than having like possibilities in terms of hue mixing. But exchanging, and I know this is so weird because when I do this, this, and this, and by that I mean my yellow uh, being bismuth yellow, but my red being a... um. Uh, magenta, quinacridone magenta, and then having a, like a cobalt teal, cobalt keel, a cobalt teal <laughs> or a cobalt turquoise, it means that the red and the blue kind of switched in terms of their native value. Mm. So my darkest color is now going to be magenta. Mm, interesting. And there's like a really big pull yeah. that that makes. I yeah. mean, the fact that it is magenta, like your darkest value, your your um sort of inherent darkest value. Um, available to you when you're mixing is magenta. So things are going to be magenta or purple or violet if you want them to be dark. Um, so it's very strange. that The value in that eats up the cobalt teal. Like cobalt teal is not opaque in the sense that, you know, it's not going to be as, uh, to have that much like tinting strength as let's say a cad red would be, which is very, very opaque. Um, so 
the value of teal doesn't quite affect that much. It does affect a little bit, but it doesn't affect that much the mixes that you do with your magenta. But I don't know why, it just messes with my brain having like, instead of going progressively from light, from lightest to light to mid to dark, mm -hmm. to go from lightest to light mm -hmm. to darkest to mid light, yeah. to me it's like, well, no, maybe mid. They're kind of like the same value, I feel. Co um, cad red and cobalt teal. They're just so weird. It's like their their inherent kind of saturation. It's so it's so strange. Brightness in a color can can be so you know um, um, they can it can fool you when you're trying to make like an objective uh, um, uh, when you're trying to an objective judgment when you're trying to see what they what their value really is. And um, I wouldn't say that's value zero with uh, Cornacridon Magenta. The the brightness does throw you, at least it throws me off a little bit, but I do think it has to be like half a step or a step lighter than what would be my black or ultramarine blue. It just feels like it is a little bit lighter. Let's say half a step. So I've always been, well, I mean, in practice, I don't mind it, but I've always been confused by the fact that that would be my darkest. I don't know why I associate my darkest as as a blue. It it almost feels like blue has more of a grounding power, which is what you kind of think of when you think of black, when you think of, I don't know, burnt umber or raw umber, or like we were saying, like castle earth. They're these very kind of, you know, weighty colors. And they always seem to be off to that side. I would put blue and black and like cooler earths all in the, I mean, they're not in the same category, but I would call them analogous in that sense. So just to throw in a super saturated red in there and think of it, okay, that's my dark, that's my darkest dark. It's kind of strange. It's kind of strange. Um, so instead of talking, because I think I'm talking too much. I Can I say something to talk bored. a little bit more? <laughs> oh, no, go ahead. Uh, no, I, I, I mean, I, it was very interesting what you were saying, and I was thinking that, it should be very cool to, I mean, because I understand what you're saying about like that, not that like crescendo. Yeah. But just like that hiccup in the red. Yeah, let's call it a hiccup. Yeah, that's perfect. But I think it would be very cool if you tried okay. sometime. No, 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 Let not me know, now. Cause I, don't, I, I was about to do this. No, no, so. no, not, not right now. I mean, if you sometime okay. try okay. to do the... Sounds like a challenge. Uh, bismuth yellow. Yeah. Uh, the uh, quinacridone magenta. Yeah, the and magenta. And your blue. Oh, yeah, I don't no, think No, 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 bismuth, no, I'm sorry. Yellow ochre. Okay. Quinacridone and blue. Oh, that? Yeah. That's and strange. if you would try the cadmium red with the turquoise and the bismuth yellow. Okay. Oh, So okay. they would be like yeah, okay. kind of in the same wavelength. I know that yellow ochre is not the same. I love my yellow ochre. As, no, no, no. The same as the quinacridone in terms of value. But it would kind of be okay, no, like I a get more you. Oh. stable. Oh, so this... Yeah. Oh, they're very close in value. Yeah, exactly. Right. And, Super close. And bismuth yellow, uh, cadmium red, and the turquoise, which are also very near. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it would super be mid-tone heavy. Exactly. Oh, very it would nice. be very interesting too. Yes, very nice. Um, yeah, I'll try that. <laughs> see if the overall value of the painting is affected. But I think we know the answer and it it's probably yes. No, yeah, of course. But I, I think it would be interesting not because of that, but because of what you were describing as like that uh, thing in your head that you have with the blue being like the like the lowest point there. Yeah, my darkest dark. Exactly. Yeah. So if you have just uh, more homogen homogeneous, how yeah, do you say yeah, that? Yeah, sure. Uh, palette. It would be interesting yeah. to see how your work, um, like how, how your brain painting. changes yeah. the way you work. Oh, it's going to blow up. <laughs> so, should we say hi? Uh, yeah, I think we've <laughs> uh, bored people enough with the uh, 
color. Yeah. Also, I don't know cloth. why I was struggling so bad. With what? Trying to describe the two palettes I had in my brain. No, it's perfect. I mean, I was trying to say everything, but I don't know why my brain was like... It was perfect. Turned off? No, no, no. It's perfect. Like I was thinking the names in Spanish. Yeah. But then trying to say the names in English. Ah, it was So fine. I was you struggling were a lot. Perfection. Cacaito dice, hola, hola, ¿cómo Cape van? Alone. Y dice, pobre chilicita, está mejor. Eh, pues está mejor, Cacaito. Sí, ha sido... Estresante. Muy estresante. Sí, sí. es que no le gusta a uno verla No, Ay, no, enfermita. es horrible. Eh, Carlos Taylor dice, hola amigos, ¿cómo están? Carlos. Hola, Carlos, ¿qué tal? Carlos estaba haciendo un experimento pintando encima de un dibujo, si no estoy mal. Mm, muy chévere. Sí, sí, sí. ¿Cómo le fue con el experimento, Carlos? Carlos adora a Sargent. ¿Sí? Sorolla Sargent, sí. Catherine Poremsky saying, Hi, everyone. I can't stay today. Having a hard week. Mm. My son goes to Michigan State oh. and two of the kids who were killed oh live my. in our community. Oh, Lord. Just feeling numb. Yeah. And Catherine was saying, Get better soon, Chile. Mm. Oh, Catherine, we send you a big, big hug in yeah. this uh, no. very difficult times. There, How do you? No, there's no words. Any, yeah, to... it's it's there's there's nothing you could say. It makes how how could you ever make sense of something that's absolutely senseless? Yeah, but our our hearts are with you, and your son, and all the community. Yeah, that... we uh, we knew also that Hector. Hector that's, too. I don't know if that's his alma mater. Uh, if he graduated, he studied there. He went. Yeah, there. my sister too. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. So, so Danny's sister is also pretty shook because she went there. She she did her um her masters there and, just recently. Yeah. So it's very. And she knows a lot of people that. Yeah, it's very just. There, so. You know, it, it just makes no sense. Yeah. So, it's very strange because we're a small community and and there's already people that have ties to to um um to people that. You know, we're in some way affected. So it is, I mean, it, it's horrendous. It's, it it's is. senseless. It makes absolutely, um, I don't know. Th there's nothing rational about uh, what goes on. So I don't know. I, it's, it's, what else can you say? It's, it's just so, uh, the good thing, if we have to find some sort of goodness, is that, w I think human beings have not just said, okay, this is going to be part of our daily lives. Like, apparently this happens every day now. No, we still, like, it is still shocking. It is still something that leaves, like, a taste in your mouth that you just will never be able to get rid of. And it's horrifying, and it's, I don't know. And and that's, at least I feel that that's, that's a good thing. That at some point, I don't know when the hell that's going to happen. But at some point, people are going to do something and say, hey, this is, I, I think we've reached our limit. But I have no idea with that. I, I don't know where that is. Yeah. I really don't. Like where I or how it stops. I have no idea. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, no, we feel for you. But it's, you know, something that just simply should not happen. That's That's, that's everything that we can say. It's just something that, There's no reason for it to happen. Like accidents happen. And those things are things that you can't control. This, these things should not happen. No. Period. Anyways, let's keep, um, let's keep moving. because it is like, it's a debilitating subject matter. I feel when you start to talk about those things, it's, it's horrifying. Daniel Martins was saying, hola, Dani y Nico. Daniel. Hola Daniel. Javier Ugarte was saying, estaba diciendo, hola Dani, Nico and Chili, ¿qué opinan de la técnica al pastel? Muy lindo. Sí. A mí me ayudó mucho el pastel cuando estaba teniendo problemas con... ¿El hambre? El... Bueno, Bruce. <risa> eh, no, con color, hubo un profe que era muy bueno, eh, que me sugirió que tomara como, él daba una clase de pastel. Me dijo, me sugirió que la tomara, eh, porque el pastel como que 
pues no, uno no tiene que preocuparse del si sabe uno mezclar, si no, eh, eh, o si uno es como muy sucio en la paleta, sino que uno solo se preocupa de coger un color y tratar de, de generar relaciones con otro color que uno coge. Ya son colores limpios y están ahí. Entonces, eh, a mí me ayudó muchísimo. Es como quitar unas variables para que uno todavía se pueda como fijar en lo que uno debe fijarse cuando uno está tratando de aprender sobre color. Me ayudó impresionante. Sí, estaba buscando, pero creo que me demoró mucho en ponerlo acá. Uh -huh. Pero... Eh... De Emil J. Robinson, que es ah, absolutamente increíble. Sí, un monstruo haciendo pastel. Eh, hay unos ejemplos de pastel que uh -huh. son... Chocolate, red velvet. O sea, te copiaste de mi chiste, pero pues lo, lo hiciste lo, después. Lo, lo, lo abrí, le, le, di, le di alas. Más bien lo cerraste, pero bueno. Eh, <ríe> sí, pero... Pero pues si a Javier le interesa la técnica de pastel, Emil J. Robinson. Sí, es un monstruo. Bueno, uno puede decir Emil, Emil J. Robinson es increíble para, dos puntos, cualquier técnica. Cocinar. Para eh, la técnica que estaba diciendo Javier es increíble. Entonces, sí, es muy bueno. Si no lo ha visto, se lo recomiendo. Sí. Luis Fernando Bernal dice, hola familia. Hola Luis Fernando, ¿qué tal? Luis Fernando. Ricard was saying hello Nico and Danny and hello chat. Hey Ricard, how are you? Kevin Johnston was saying buenas o dice buenas. buenas. Hola Kevin. Buenas Kevin. Uh, Kevin Ravana was saying LMAO. I think I'm I one know. of those. Yeah. Let's. Yeah. Something funny I said, probably. No, well, I, I don't I'm think I'm sure so. I said something funny. Maybe they're... I'm sure I say... They're laughing about A comment. You, not with you, but oh. yeah. I mean, you can't be funny that way. <laughs> uh, good Girl Williams one was saying, hi, guys. Hey, hey, Good Girl Williams one. How are you? Welcome. I don't think I, I had um, heard that username. So. No, me neither. It's That's good. why I was saying welcome. Good, good. Peter Smeekens hey, is saying, Hi, everybody. A question for Nicolas. Yes, please. I watched most of your live videos, yeah. but never see you step away from a painting. No. Or turn it upside down no. or look at it through a mirror. Oh, no. How do you check your painting? Oh, it, like uh, I have an uh, uh, inordinate amount of faith, I feel. <laughs> no, that's... Um, I wouldn't say that's a virtue that I have. I think that that's a sacrifice that I make for like trying to do the um, the videos. The fact that I can't step away or I can't use devices to. I mean, to be totally honest, never have I ever uh, used. Yeah, I would take a drink there. No, what is it? You take a drink if you've done it. I wouldn't. I <laughs> well, wouldn't I'm so drink. Sorry. I wouldn't drink because I've never flipped a painting of mine. It's just, I don't know. Me it's neither, like, you know, and I haven't seen no, it with a mirror. Yeah, oh, mirrors? No, forget it. Because I, I push things, so I I can't, if they look funky and wonky in my paintings, I can't imagine what they look like with a mirror. Or maybe they look great. They look good, actually. It's um, like, oh, yeah, why, isn't it. It, why isn't it inversed? Yeah. Uh, but I never check with a mirror because I've never been concerned with, like, symmetry or stuff like that. So I don't care about that. Never flipped it because I don't know why. I just always feel, I think that if I'm doing something that I'm not supposed to be doing in terms of my composition, I would notice it, like in terms yeah. of shapes. Like my eyes are, are uh, I'm not saying I have good trained eyes. I'm not saying like, I'm not saying any of that. But I'm just saying, I, ha I think I have good eyes in terms of identifying shapes. So I think I can abstract myself. Um, in my mind's eye, I can abstract the picture in terms of shapes sufficiently so that I don't really need to flip it because if I see it already abstract as shapes then it it serves no purpose to flip it to see shapes again it just for me it would be just shapes um so um so yeah I don't know I I don't do those things they're kind of scary to me too so the first two answers would be I just don't do them I don't know if, you know I'm not saying I don't need to do them Um, I love walking back for sure. 
that the ability to see the whole of your um, image. Oh yeah, that I miss like crazy. The ability to see it abstractly, I think I'm fine with that. I, I don't think I'm losing any of that. And my, so those are my real answers. And my more personal answer would be, I'm just scared, you know, with what I would see. Have you done that one of those techniques while you were studying or no. something? No, 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 no. Because I do remember that we did, I don't remember what class it was, but I do remember that we had to flip it. Uh, flip it. Yeah. Yeah. Like right in front of everyone. Yeah. They would just like flip the image. Yeah. And it was weird because, I mean, I knew that they were saying, okay, so you can see that this one's wrong. And I was like, well, I think it looks pretty good when you yeah. don't flip it. I mean, you flip it and it looks like wonky. But when you don't, it looks cool. So, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, and I've never painted so, um, let's say, abstractly to say, how do I hang it? Like, do I show it like this or like this or like this? I, I kind of have an idea in my brain how it's supposed to be. So this is a reclining pose and it's supposed to be like uh, uh, horizontal, but I put my paper as a vertical, I drew it as a vertical and I'm gonna paint it as a vertical. And, you know, I would suggest that for example, if somebody buys it eventually, I mean, it doesn't matter, but I would suggest that they, you know, put it up vertically. Cause you know, when you buy it, you could do whatever you want with it. You could flip any, you could put a painting upside down if you wanted to, so. But I, I, I think I already have that set in my mind. So those things don't quite change. I don't think I've ever changed a composition of mine. From you know, saying, I like, did. You know, you paint something and then you go like, oh, that mm -hmm. looks actually better. No, I've done I, that. I've never done no, that. No, I've done no. that. Now that you're saying it, I do yeah. remember when I was in art school. Yeah. I was going to hang some things for evaluation. Yeah. It was a uh, human drawing. Um, Three? Yeah. Okay. And... I was going to hang them, so I put them like in the order I wanted. Yeah. There were like some pencil drawings. And I was just like walking the other way. And I looked at the torso and I was like, you know what? I like it better like this. So I did in that moment uh, you hang flipped it. it. Yeah. Different. Okay. Did it work? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean. How did you do? Uh, it, uh, it was a five. Oh, out of look five, at you. yeah. Oh, you're but <laughs> here. no, but it was great for me because well, I yeah. mean, it's I usually what a you know a good grade means. No, yes, but I mean, it was great for me because I liked it that way. I mean, if it was maybe uh, I don't know, a two out of five, because they didn't like it. Yeah, I think I would like re like do it again because okay. I I, I like convinced. risking it because I was convinced. Oh, okay. That I liked it better like that. Okay. So, and yeah. I think they liked it like that. Well, they're like, why is, it, gotten, uh, why is it like that? It's essentially like. And a, I was like, well, a. to be honest, I liked it better like two minutes ago. I liked it better like that. Oh, so. it doesn't matter. It's a decision. Yes. So, um, let's see. Mm, Carla Anglada was saying hi, Danny Nicolás, sweet Chilean chat. Hey, Carla, how are you? Uh, Nesrin Amin was saying, a drop cap is the first letter. Oh, a drop cap. Okay. Or, uh, I forgot already. Ornated initial? No. No. <laughs> Historicized. Histor his uh, something. Historical but premonition. I, I, like the, I like the name that you found a little bit more. He, what was it? His. You liked it that much that you have no idea. I mean, we'll be able to find it, I feel. No? Initial. Do you think it's unfindable? No. Initial letter. I mean, it's probably already in, in the in, on, on your search thing. I don't know how to look for the search. You don't even have the search history, do you? No, but when you... Well, historiated I mean, initial. Historiated. No, we don't need that, so... Historiated. Historiated initial. That's, be, that's nice, then... Yeah. What is it? No cap? No, drop cap. No, I was kidding, but um <laughs> yeah, I like the other. I like the formal one a little bit better, I feel. Um Damian Alquichire dice, "Hola, una pregunta." Sí. 
¿Cómo será la dinámica del curso de composición? ¿Las clases serán demos en vivo o será más teórica tipo presentaciones de slides con referentes? ¿Habrá como ejercicios que se revisarán a la siguiente clase? Uh -huh. ¿Esas revisiones a los ejercicios se hacen en, bio, en uh -huh. vivo vía Zoom o serán grabadas individualmente al estudiante? Eh, muy... Entonces, si quieres, uno por uno. Sí, muy amable. Entonces, hola, hola Damián. Eh, ¿Cómo Damián, será la amable. dinámica del curso de composición? Entonces, el curso es... Eh, se inicia con lo que sería, digamos, conceptualmente el tema de la semana y para eso se hace como una mini presentación eh, donde se utilizan referentes y se trata de identificar como el objetivo pues, que va a ser eh, el que dicta como la intención que tenemos que tener para, para hacer las imágenes durante esa semana. Luego yo empiezo a trabajar y la, la demás gente puede empezar a trabajar si quiere o pueden simplemente verme trabajar entonces yo estoy pintando esa, esa pintura que voy a tratar de resolver para la temática de esa semana. Eh, durante esa clase estoy respondiendo preguntas. Y lo que sucede después es que tenemos un Discord. Y es un Discord que inicialmente, porque yo lo iba a hacer como lo hace pues normalmente el resto de personas que yo he visto que ofrecen cursos. Y es que tienen como una crítica durante la semana, pero normalmente hay un día que, es, que dedican a esa crítica. Le puedo decir con toda sinceridad, y pues Dani está acá y no me dejaría decir mentiras, que yo estoy en el Discord como todos los días. Entonces, todas nuestro Discord ahorita en este curso que estamos haciendo ha sido súper activo. Entonces, depende pues también de que las personas sean activas y que quieran participar en el Discord, pero las personas montan sus trabajos, sus trabajos en, en desarrollo, pues lo, lo que uno llama WIPs, como Works in Progress. Sus procesos. Sí, sus procesos. Y eh, yo voy dando referentes eh, y voy dando anotaciones sobre todo lo que hay que hacer. Y la gente entre sí también, también se va dando también, cosas muy que amables. es muy chévere. Ha sido, ha sido, yo no dejaría que fuera como en mala vibra, como gente muy crítica tampoco. Mm. Pues encontraría una manera como de decirle a la gente, hey, tranquilos, yo me encargo. No se preocupen ustedes que yo me encargo de la parte como crítica. Pero, pero la gente ha sido súper, súper amable con los comentarios, con, con cómo reciben el trabajo de las otras personas. Eh, y al comienzo de la clase, de la pro, digamos, si eso está pasando durante esta semana, la próxima semana al comienzo, yo también escogería, aparte de haber ya hablado personalmente con todos los que estén resolviendo los ejercicios, yo escojo unos ejercicios ya finalizados y hablo del por qué siento que esos ejercicios fueron eh, efectivos, fueron eficientes para lo que estábamos haciendo eh, durante esa semana trato de conectar una semana la semana anterior con la que sigue para mm. que no se sientan como, como ejercicios aislados y no es solo el ejercicio eh, de la clase sino que sí se dejan porque ah, es claro, que estaba preguntando ahora como ejercicios no, que no, no, se no, revisan no, al pues día siguiente tareas, si hay tareas o sea, sí, obviamente digamos el propósito de cada semana es hacer eh, ahorita para color estábamos haciendo dos imágenes yo creo que para composición como seguramente sugiere que sean imágenes un poquito más complejas eh, porque tenemos que lidiar con variables como, como uh -huh. un poquito distintas. Eh, seguramente vamos a hacer es una imagen más desarrollada durante la semana, o sea que se es espero eh, que las personas resuelvan ocho imágenes y yo resolvería también ocho imágenes. Y Damián dice, uh -huh. ¿estas revisiones a los ejercicios serán en vivo vía se Zoom hacen... o son grabadas individualmente al estudiante? No, se hacen en... no, 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 porque a mí no me gusta grabar individualmente eh, y no lo hago porque no pueda, o sea, no me quita nada pues tiempo, pero eso para mí no, no, me, no me importa. Pero no, no, no lo hago porque pues yo he sido profe muchos años y, y yo sé que hay veces una persona cuando está insegura sobre su trabajo quiere que solo le hablen a ella, eh, a ella me refiero la persona, pero eh, eso no es bueno en el sentido en que los comentarios que se le hace a una persona pueden ser súper útiles para otra persona. O sea, puede que la obra de una persona sea distinta a la obra de otra persona, pero en los comentarios que uno le está haciendo a la primera persona, la segunda persona puede decir, wow, esto lo estaba tratando de resolver yo, pero no tuve el coraje para hacer esta imagen. Pero uno nunca sabe cuándo eso va a tener resonancia. Entonces, yo siempre le pido a la gente que se entienda como un colectivo. O sea, cuando uno está haciendo una clase, cuando hay un curso, el colectivo tiene que, que funcionar y una de las maneras como se funciona es, es esa, es como todo el mundo 
pues en un estado vulnerable y todo el mundo se va a sentir como, ay, la mía es la peor y, ah, mi pintura es horrible, no la quiero mostrar. Pero si uno se sobrepone como a ese sentimiento, eh, eh, el colectivo se va a ver beneficiado con, con los comentarios que puedan surgir a partir de eso. Entonces yo muy rápidamente hago que todo el mundo se sienta cómodo para que los comentarios que uno les hace a, a ciertas obras en particular sean útiles para todos nosotros. Yo, yo, yo siento que esa es la mejor manera de hacerlo. Porque si no, pues, entonces no importa que seamos un grupo. Lo que, lo que estamos haciendo es una clase para 12 individuos. Mm. Y, y, pues, de eso no se trata. Al menos lo que yo propongo, pues, eso no es. Entonces, también, pues, para que las personas... Por ejemplo, si hay personas que dicen, no, 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 yo me siento cómodo es cuando solo me hablan a mí. No, esto, eso es como una tutoría, entonces. Eso no es lo que yo estoy ofreciendo. Yo estoy es ofreciendo un, una un espacio que se entienda como un salón virtual, como un uh -huh. taller virtual, que quiere decir que pues, los talleres se activan cuando todas las personas trabajando, cuando todas las personas que están trabajando ahí, como que se vuelven conscientes de lo que está haciendo eh, la otra persona. Sí. Eh, entonces sí, de, diría que esa es, esa es la dinámica, nos ha funcionado súper bien, no lo digo porque... O sea, podría, el taller que podría estar dando ahora podría ser el último taller que, es, que daría, digamos, si no quisiera dar más clases, eh, y diría lo mismo, o sea, no estoy tratando como de vender el próximo taller diciendo que nos ha ido chévere, o sea, yo además no puedo mmm, controlar lo que la gente, por ejemplo, que tomó el taller y que lo, que lo está tomando ahorita vaya a decir en un futuro, pero estoy... 100% seguro que todos estamos súper contentos con lo que ha sido ese taller. Pues y además lo han manifestado, sí, que sí. esa es la Entonces, ma única manera de saber. Claro, y, y a mí me ayuda también entender cuando algo funciona y, y cuando algo de pronto no, pero, pero creo que nos ha ido súper, súper bien con esa dinámica. Entonces, eh, ah. sí, es como si fuera un salón de clase, uh -huh. honestamente. Pensé, es le, tratando de que las dinámicas de un salón de clase que son súper son bonitas, eh, se... Repliquen en línea, sí. Sí, sí que, que el espacio en línea como que pueda simular ese, ese espacio físico. Maximiliano Romaldi dice, saludos desde Argentina, aprendo mucho de tu técnica. Y dice, ¿cómo se entra al Discord? Eh, Maximiliano, el Discord... Se bueno, abre para los, las personas para que, los sí. que entren al Exacto. taller. El Discord eh, del que está hablando Nicolás es exclusivo pues para las personas que están en el taller, que están participando en el taller. Ah, eh, sí, sí, le soy, ah, le soy sincero, o sea, yo aparte de las cosas que hago, a tener un Discord donde pudiera estar pendiente como de, porque yo soy así, o sea, yo sí. estaría pendiente de todas las personas en la comunidad, no, pues me fascinaría, pero no, ni me alcanza el tiempo ni la energía y tiempo que necesitaría para estar trabajando, entonces lo tendría, lo, lo estaría metido es hablando en un Discord público de cualquier persona que quiera entrar y cualquier persona que quiera recibir comentarios, lo haría feliz. Lo que pasa es que no tengo, o sea, no tengo el tiempo y teniendo un Discord dedicado a, una, a un curso, pues hace que yo también pueda ser más eficiente en lo que, en lo que le pueda decir a las personas. Que es, es que igual esa es parte de parte del taller, o sea, parte sí, de sí, esa sí. idea de claro y es la manera, de clase, como claro, de, porque de un salón de clase. Es, sí, que es esta... y es la manera como todos nos mantenemos comunicándonos eh, constantemente. O sea, no es... Sí, no solo lo que se no habla es, en el curso, estoy, sino... Estoy yo el sábado y de resto no me hable. Uh -huh. eh, Damián Alquichire dice, gracias por la respuesta. No, muy amable. Ese Jorge... A usted por la... <risa> no sé qué fue lo que dice. A usted por el interés. Esos ejercicios se pueden resolver con dibujos, pues en blanco y negro, slash escala de grises, o tienen que ser en pintura color. Eh, va a cambiar, o sea, la... Supongo que está preguntando por el nuevo curso. Sí, eh, cada ejercicio, para, para explicárselo de esta manera, cada ejercicio, aunque, o sea, porque en composición uno realmente, cuando uno está hablando de formas, diseño, nada de eso radica en, de, en el color, digamos. El, uno puede obviar el color y puede hacer todos los ejercicios en, en, eh, en, eh, en una monocromía, digamos, pero... Pero, si le soy sincero, como es pintura, como yo también lo quiero vincular a pintura y no hacerlo como un ejercicio, no son ejercicios de composición como los que uno hace, digamos, para concept. Sí, iba a decir para fotografía, que no, también se exacto, hace mucho como... No, no son ejercicios de composición como de... Eh, yo diría, es que lo que más consigue uno, lindita, para, para composición 
en internet es como para narrativa visual. Sí, claro. O sea, los libros que consigues, los gumroads, mm. todos los tutoriales. Pero es que yo diría que mucho de eso son como las reglas que ya se conocen. Pues, y, o son muy y... específicas a, a una manera de narración visual que tiene que ver con hacer storyboards o hacer cómics, o, sí, o sea, viñetas en cómics, uh -huh. o, o preproducción, como preproducción visual para, sí. para animaciones, películas, porque todas ellas, pues, en últimas la composición es la manera como se disponen las formas para contar una historia. Pero en la pintura, diga, y estamos hablando como de la pintura, no la pintura figurativa, tra que trata de ser como, de que trata de tener también una narrativa, sino la pintura, eh, o sea, la pintura que tiene miles de años, eh, no necesariamente se ajusta, se ajusta a esas normas, porque la pintura puede narrar de distintas maneras. Sí. Entonces, claro, vamos a explorar es más una eh, composición, o sea, composición y diseño que tiene que ver con pintura, con la definición más, eh, digamos... ¿Amplia? De sí, pintura. mucho más amplia de uh -huh. pintura. Eh, déjame, te leo esto y... Ah, vengo perdón, y el curso es en inglés. O sea, ah, yo sí. puedo hacer comentarios eh, puntuales en español, pero, el, o sea, yo siempre, siempre... Eh, eh, le doy prelación al grupo sobre la persona, siempre, 100%. Pienso que un grupo saludable es lo mejor que uno puede tener. Y esto lo digo yo, no ahora, no. Cuando le daba clase a 20 estudiantes en la universidad, en la Facultad de Artes Visuales, lo mismo. Siempre le hablo a la persona, pero siempre es importante es el grupo. Cuando el grupo está bien, todas las personas que componen el grupo están bien. Entonces, esa siempre es mi filosofía. Cuando hago talleres por fuera, es al grupo, obvio le hablo a las personas, pero siempre entiendo, nos entiendo a todos como moviéndonos como un, un, como un, un poco de engranajes conectados juntos. Obvio reconozco que cada persona es un universo aparte, pero siempre, siempre, siempre es, es como yo, yo hago que prime el, el grupo. Entonces, como hago que prime el grupo, el taller lo toman personas de todo el planeta. De, o sea, ahorita hay personas, eh, 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 hay una persona de México, hay una persona de Holanda, hay una persona de Francia, eh, hay personas eh, inglesas, hay personas norteamericanas y pues ¿dónde nos juntamos todos es, todas estas personas que hablamos distintos idiomas? Pues en inglés, Esto ya, o sea, más allá de que uno lo vea como, ah, que mamera inglés, que no, no, pero pues es el idioma que, que podemos decir que, que en el que nos, nos encontramos todos de alguna manera eh, u otra, entonces yo opto por ese. Entonces, importante que si, 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 si quieren eh, tomar el taller, que sepan que el taller pues, se hace así para todos. Y no es como, oiga, háblele a ellos, pero ahorita demórese 10 minutos hablándome a mí en español. Mm, no sé. O sea, ahorita, por ejemplo, a una persona, eh, a Emi, que es mexicano, por momentos le hablo en español... Pero, es que mi chile está teniendo un ataque ahí de, de, pobrecito. Y no hay nada que uno pueda hacer. Le da por toser y no podemos hacer nada. Bueno, pero a Emi, a Emi, lo que venía diciendo, a Emi le estamos, pues cuando hablo con Emi y me pide algún comentario en español, se lo hago. Le dio como un ataque de, de tos, pobrecita. Sí, está toda tapadita, pobrecita. Sí, es la que nos haga acá compañía, mi chili, mi chilita. ¿Cómo está mi chili? No, miren esa ratita. Ay, mi chili. Ay, mi chilita. Eh, a ver. Dice Damián, muy genial, muchas gracias. Andrés Garcés dice, esa es la clave. Y Luis Fernando Bernal dice, hola, dime dónde hay más informa... No, dónde hay información más ampliada sobre el curso, me interesa mucho. Eh, no, hay un post donde el, el post que hice ayer en Instagram dice literal lo que va a ser el curso. Entonces, en, el, en la descripción, 
eh, del, del post está todo lo que va a ser el taller y mañana que ponga los, los cupos, que abra los cupos para la gente que esté interesada, hay una imagen del taller y hay una segunda imagen que va a decir la misma información, porque más información no puedo como dar, estoy dando, estoy diciendo cuál es el objetivo del taller, o sea, las, las, la intensidad horaria, eh, los días que se va a hacer el taller, eh, les estoy diciendo que va a haber un Discord donde se va a hacer crítica, evaluación, eh, eh, va, la gente va a tener acceso a los videos, se, van a gra se graban los videos localmente, aquí los grabamos en, en OBS y después los montamos al canal, entonces se suben en, en buena resolución, sí. entonces la gente que de pronto los quiera volver a ver o tuvo que faltar a una clase por cualquier razón los puede ver ahí. Eh, digo cuál, de nuevo, el objetivo que tiene la clase, que es un objetivo pues abierto, pero yo creo que se entiende perfectamente, eh, y pongo la temática de cada semana. Entonces, yo creo que ahí está todo, uh -huh. lo, que, lo que se tiene que saber. Y pues, o sea, es mi pintura, entonces también pueden como asociar lo que es mi trabajo con lo que vamos a ver, y, y yo creo que no hay, no hay sorpresas en ese sentido. Uh -huh. Entonces, es, eso es... O sea, lo, lo que, sí. yo creo que lo que, of, lo que ofrecemos es, es muy directo y muy simple. Sí, no, de no pronto hay... si no habían visto el post, sí. pues es una invitación para que vean el post en el Instagram de Nicolás. Eh, Luis Fernando dice, el curso se llama Shapes and Design. Sí. Sí. Eh, so, where were we? Mm. Let's see. So, Parting Mist was saying outside of the color from the tube, it would interact with other colors different too. The teal is normally cobalt and the turquoise is made with turquoise. The chemical difference probably makes the pigments mix different. But I never used turquoise. Yeah. I have only used cobalt teal. I'd like to try bismuth yellow. Never tried it. Oh, I it's a gorgeous yellow. I used cat yellow lemon in oil. It's very nice. And I, I used Hansa yellow in watercolor. Okay, so I would think it's very similar for you in terms of hue. Uh, but the body in bismuth yellow is far better. Because yellows usually don't have like good body. Oh, I think you would like it. It's a little more expensive, I feel. Yeah, a little bit. It's not crazy expensive. But I think you would, if you like bodied paint, mm. like kind of full bodied paint, oh, that's... I think that's the nicer yellow that I've ever tried. Yeah, I have so, to say I also uh, like love <laughs> bismuth yellow. Yeah, because of the body it has. Yeah, because yeah. I, I always... it's frustrating with, when you have a yellow that is very bland. Oh yeah, and so you, you just, just have can't to cover and cover exactly. like layers and layers. Exactly, and even if you layer and layer and layer and layer, you can't get to the point you want. With yeah. bismuth yellow, it has the body, so you can use what you think you need to use, and it would be like the perfect amount. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't have any, you know, um, I, it's not as if I'm pushing color because my mother makes it or something. <laughs> so there's no interest, and I, and I don't. Well, actually, it, it's the one I get is usually from. Windsor Newton, but I don't push brands either. That's Nobody, the one we like, get, I buy get here. So. All my colors. So, but I don't care about pushing a color. I'm just like very convinced about how good it is for my painting. So, Cacaito dice, hay chili, pobrecita. Ojalá que se mejore pronto. Sí, está malita. Es que ahorita le dio un ataque de todos. No, yo estaba hablando y yo decía, no. Es que cuando, o sea, me, me he estado volteando mucho a mirarla. Sí. Porque no sé si la escuchas desde ahí, pero estaba muy congestionadita durmiendo. Sí, pero se, no. se levantaba cada rato. También es que hoy como el día ha estado tan frío. Está picho el día ahorita. Sí, ahorita me toca ponerle un saquito. Pues ahorita está acá Ay, con cobija conmigo y con bolsa de agua. No, está. Pero eh, igual le pongo un saquito más tarde. Le falta comer helado. The pues premio ya ha tenido. Mean Girls puede ver conmigo. Y estamos arrunchadas. Mientras tú la consientes. ¿Algo más? No, no, no. Hacer, haciéndose las uñas. 
Javier Ugarte dice, pregunta Nico, para limpiar Javier. tu paleta, ¿usas solventes o solo raspas? No. Es vidrio, ¿no? Sí, tengo un... un... Tengo un coso de estos que es, es eh, palette scraper que viene con una cuchillita y, y listo. Y cuando no lo hago queda su, su, sucia como la tengo debajo. Que se me olvida. Eh, Lu Andino dice, hola a todos, pobrecita Chili, ojalá se recupere pronto. Voy a ver el capítulo de Bob Esponja y una carita. Ah, linda. muy bien, muy bien. Muy buen capítulo y muchas gracias por los buenos deseos para mi Chili. Sí, linda. sí. Seguro la chile se, se mejora. Um, Ritual Tattoo dice, hola, ¿cómo van? Buena tarde. Bien, muy amable, gracias. Eh, y ahora dicen en inglés, I'm going to eat my electric lunch by hearing and seeing you too. Ok. So, electric lunch? Well, corrientazo. Ah, Or they're a Tesla. I don't know. So, yeah. Did you like my joke? Yeah, no, no, no. Es que se me escapó el resto. Uh, and they are saying, I'm, I started a sort of digital series with mm -hmm. the theme of million, Millos Costumbrism. Oh, do you ah, remember? Ah, sí, 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 sí. Millos Dios y algo más me faltaba. Millos Costumbrismo, no sé. Sí, But muy it bien. turned quickly to a surrealistic because of two characters in the background as sword. Ah, oh, well. But that sounds cool. Sí, muy bien, muy bien. Millos, Millos. Mm. Marcelo Peralta was saying hi Danny, Nico and Chili. Hi chat. Hey Marcelo, how are you? Marcelo. Mm. Rachel, oh no, already read that. So Michael Ortegón. Mm -hmm. O en español dice Micael Ortegón. No sé, Michael Ortegón. Yo iría Michael. Pero pues uno no sabe. Dice, Yo me mandaría con Michael. Hola, buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Admiro Michael. una pintura que tienes en donde solo juegas con el croma y no con los valores. Es un retrato de Dani. ¿Cómo lograr dar esa sensación de tridimensionalidad mm, sin complejo. contrastes? Uf, difícil. ¿Se selecciona un color para las sombras y otro para las luces? ¿O mm. cómo se juega con ello? Sí, uno, o sea, ese también fue como ejercicio que hicimos ahorita en, en nuestro curso de color. Pero sí, o sea, con... Eh, la, la descripción tridimensional de la forma depende de eh, los valores tonales, ¿no es cierto? De cuán claro o oscuro es algo. Las formas que recorren, la, la noción de tridimensionalidad, de una forma recorriendo un espacio, eh, la entendemos porque podemos decir que va de luz a sombra y asociamos a la luz con un valor tonal como claro y a la sombra con un valor tonal oscuro. O sea, cuando se aleja de la luz es que se vuelve digamos, oscuro. Entonces, cuando uno no tiene eso, cuando uno sacrifica eso, uno tiene que ser consciente de, de los, las otras maneras de contrastar que le quedan a uno, que son como contrastes por temperatura o contrastes por complementarios, contrastes por saturación, y uno empieza a usar todas esas otras. O sea, no porque uno deje de usar la variable que es más adecuada para describir forma, quiere decir que no se pueda hacer ese ejercicio. Entonces es un ejercicio súper bonito. Lo obliga a uno como a repensar la manera como uno describe o entiende o, o presenta como la noción de forma en, en pintura. Es súper chévere. Parting mist, the beginning when you were saying that we were talking a lot about color, people yeah. were going to get bored. Yeah. Parting Mist was saying, color analysis is never boring. Oh, good. And a happy face. Good, that's awesome. Because it never bores me either, so. Andres Garces dice, hola, can't wait to see where the painting goes today. Yeah, sí, yo tampoco. Yo no sé. Yeah, me, me either. I'm convinced, but not quite still. So I, I haven't developed forms because... Or like modeled forms, because I'm trying to understand what I'm doing with with color or what I want with color. Because I didn't really have like a notion of where I wanted to go with with the uh, color on this one. So we'll see how that goes. Michael Ortegón dice muchas gracias por la respuesta y espero que se mejore Chile. Muchas gracias, Michael. La chilita. Mm. Good girl, Williams. 
one who's saying, yes, I'm new. This is my first live. No way. Oh. Nice. So happy to have you uh, joining the OPL live streams. Good girl, Williams. We hope it's not the last one that you join. Ricard was saying, I'm good. Getting ready for the night shift at the factory. Also got into a art school. Oh, oh dude, nice. so cool. When do you start, Ricard? That is so cool. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, Very nice. Best of luck. Veliko Duric. Veliko. Saying, hello, guys. Composition is very Phil Hailish. Oh, the thrust of it? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, everything is Phil Hailish. <laughs> I wouldn't mind. Well, it's always a good thing. It's a great if thing. He's one of my favorite you painters. Do oh, reminds yeah. people of Phil Hale. One of my so. favorite painters. One of the most talented, like, drafts people, painters. He's amazing. How are you doing with the painting, with the palette um, change? I was um, hesitant about what I wanted to do. And I think I'm still trying to figure out relationships that I want to um, to sort of explore with the painting. But it's it's getting there. I mean, it it'll... I didn't expect it. And because it's kind of like an abstract image, I didn't expect it to just pop out like easily. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I think it's moving slowly, but um, I think it's okay. I'm interested in knowing what is like the, the palette that people use when they paint. Not as in the surface where they mix, but the colors they use. Okay, yeah. Because I feel that here we always talk about how the Sorn palette. Yeah. Or the Sorn plus the little extension that you do. It's yeah. like the normal thing you do. And this feels weird because of that. But I feel that it's very interesting to know. Because I know that there's a lot of people that do have a palette that would be more similar to this one you're using today yeah. than to a Sorn palette or that they use, I don't know, 20 colors in their palette. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know if one... you want to share. You, I would be very interested in knowing that. Yeah. And, and I personally, I, I, you know, I've always spoken about the, um, the, all the benefits that I feel are inherent to working with, um, with a four color uh, Zorn palette. I think it's the palette that's almost like most suited to begin painting and to kind mm -hmm. of like understand painting. Um, that's wh what I was taught too. I think so. Some people think it's boring and, no, and that's like totally it. fine. And I feel that it's not only, I mean, I know you're saying it's good for starting, but for people that maybe want to start painting, it is a great starter, but also... It can be your whole life. Painting. Oh, I was going to say that. That palette, for so. me, yeah. For me, it's become like a, a palette that speaks about painting. Mm -hmm. So it's a palette that I can get back to as much as I want. Yeah. And it never feels like, oh, I'm going backwards just because I'm painting with this palette. Yeah. No, no, no. It's just, you know, it, it speaks about like the fundamental sort of... Um, um, building blocks of painting i feel so because of that i think that it's it's just tremendously powerful um no some people feel it's limited um in 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 its scope and i think that that's just super obvious that it's limited i mean it's it'll take nothing you know it it would take you half an hour to see where its limits lie um but it's you don't use it because it's limited you use it because it makes you like begin to understand how to paint. Yeah, like color relationships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. 
So I, I don't suggest it because I think that you could do everything with that palette. I think that that's kind of absurd, but I always suggest it because I, f I just feel it's the, it's the palette that connects the quickest with the most fundamental aspects of painting. Um, and I, you know, I don't know, I adore it. Uh, that's why you see many echoes of that palette in uh, throughout painting history. Like you'll see them through the Renaissance and you'll see them through high Renaissance, um, definitely Baroque, definitely Romanticism. Um, there is like a base palette there that exists that is beautiful. There's a, like a base notion of this palette that exists that is absolutely beautiful. And, um, and so much, it's so beautiful that it could be the, like Velázquez could reflect upon it like on the 17th century and on the 19th century it could be taken by uh, Zorn and it would still be an incredibly powerful tool to you know to speak through painting with so um it's t I think it's boundless I think it's timeless and by boundless I don't mean that it doesn't have limits like like plausible objective limits like you can quantify the limits of it i i i mean it's um it feels like you could paint um anything and i'm not speaking about representing something faithfully but it feels that it can be a tool for expression you know for for the rest of your life because it if you um are willing to paint within its own parameters you could do what you could do anything you want you 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 don't, you cannot blame your palette for your shortcomings. You cannot. Yeah, so, I was also going to say that I know that it can be li like a limited palette, as you were saying. Yeah. But I don't think that it's limiting because no. I do feel that when you understand the palette, like when you really familiarize with the Soren palette, you get to know what it has to give and what you can't make the palette give. It's never limiting. Like Never. you have a whole universe in that palette. So um, so let's see. Parting Mist was saying, in watercolor, I use Quinn Mag Magin. Okay, Quinacridone Magenta. Yeah. Yeah. Cobalt Teal. I like Quinn Magin. Quinn Magin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cobalt Teal. Yeah. And Quinn Magin sounds like a Adventure Time character. No? Sh could Queen be, Magin. yeah. Quinn Magin, yeah. Cobalt Bratty. Teal. And Hansa Yellow. Yeah, a lot of people choose Hansa Yellow. You know, I haven't used like it the go -to. in watercolor. Yeah. And Parting Mist was saying, in oil, I use Titanium White, Ivory Black, Cat Red Medium, Cat Yellow Lemon, Cat Red Light, Queen Magin, mm -hmm. Viridian, and Ultramarine Blue. Mm. So it also has like these... No, I was going to say like a kind of a Sorn start, mm, but not really. No, no it, no, it has more chroma to it. Yeah. Like chroma all over the place. The Zorn everything. palette has a single chroma accent with the red. And I'm interested in knowing, Parting Mist, why the cat red medium and cat red light? Because I feel very interesting when people say like, like they do have the same. Oh, so in, you've got both? Yeah. So oh, cat red funny. medium and cat red light. So I want to know, like, the why, because it's interesting. There's yeah. a lot of people that say, I like, I 100% need those two. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't answer for, um, what's their? Parting about? Mist. For, uh, for Parting Mist, but Cad Red Light is very orange. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a, you know, it's almost like you're not painting with a red, like, it should be because it's a red. It should be a red orange, but cat red light feels more like a um, orange red. So orange dominant and then red. Yeah, but you had um, cat red medium and cat yellow lemon. Right. So that's I mean, why yeah. I'm curious. I, I mean, well, we were talking about this in, very in our interesting class to that know uh, Ruprecht sent palette. me his uh, palette, and uh, he's got a a yellow and a red that pretty much make. I think he has cat yellow, cat red. But he also has cat orange. Yeah, I love that. So that that's why I was asking it's, for. It's funny that um, that he feels the need to have like an orange when you could just mix it. Yeah. But, you know, it's at, at some point, and we have to like understand this. At some point, 
color ceases to be theory and it just becomes like practice. Yeah. And if you're a painter, you just pick colors that you know and you understand fit your own practice. Yes. So it it's not as if the choices are just um, uh, based on whims or, or you're just being capricious with, with what you pick. Um, no, but it just makes sense with your painting. And I yes. think the, the easiest way to trust if those choices make sense for a painter, it's just by looking at their paintings. And if they are great paintings, like Ruprecht's are, for example, then yeah, they're good choices. Like we don't even question those things. Yeah. No, that's why I wanted to know because I love, because you can kind of understand their, well, not really their painting brain, but like a little window of their painting brain when you know the palette. Yeah. For example, that, what you were saying, I mean, if you had cat yellow and cat red but you need yeah. cat orange it's very cool it's very cool to see how your brain knows that it can make that color but it's like yes but i need it yeah I and it's it the there. only it's the only secondary that he has so sometimes if people have cat orange or an orange for example most people have cat orange because that's like the only orange that you can get pretty much um they'll have like a green and a violet. They'll say, oh, I have, I don't know, cobalt green and cobalt violet, or I had cad green, or I have cinnabar green, or I have viridian, or, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. But they'll acknowledge that they like pure pigments for everything, for their uh, primaries and their secondaries. But it's really funny when somebody says, no, no, I just want one of my secondaries, mm -hmm. and I'm good with that. But the others, like if I need a green, oh no, I have blues and yellows. Yeah. If I need a violet, no, I have blues and reds. That's why it's so interesting. Yeah, it's super funny. Um, Parting Mist was also saying, but I haven't painted a lot in oil, more in watercolor. I like soft pastel too. And that one's funny because you need a whole bang load of oh, colors. Oh, LOL. I adore it. Soft mine. pastels can mix some, but not well. Goes gray really fast for some reason. Yeah. LOL. I adored my pastel set. I used to have like a really, I started with like, like a Rembrandt box, mm -hmm. like a somewhat starter Rembrandt box, I remember. And you expanded too. Yeah, and I remember David, David Soman asking us that we could we could start with that. I forget the other, Sennelier. So we either we could either pick from um, Sennelier, which was more expensive for us at the time, I remember, or Rembrandt. Those are the ones that he um, suggested. So I got my Rembrandt box. Um, by this time, I had my scholarship. So, and no, and by this time, I had my my grant, the grant that they would give me. So I could spend some money on materials and I would be fine. Um, and I remember he eventually, because Rembrandt's, the, the set that I got was very, you know, it was, it was quite expansive, but um, I didn't have neutrals. It, 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 it was all like color, like saturated. So he was like, you know what? You should go to the store because they have them. You could buy them like singles. You just get umbers, get all the umbers that you can get. So I, I remember going to the store and I got like tons of different earth tones and umbers and like kind of um, um, neutral tones. And I probably bought like 10, 12 of them. And that palette plus those tones was like perfection. Oh, do we need? Oh, I thought we needed medicine. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, we're giving Chili some medicine, but you can, um, you can imagine what it is to give her like uh, some medicine. She hates it. She absolutely hates it. Yeah, and she squirms a lot. So I've had bigger dogs and I've given medicine to bigger dogs and it's super, I was telling Danny, it's like super easy because you just hold a big dog down and just, you know, kind of put your fingers on, on their mouths, like just to make them open their mouths, like the corners of their mouth and that opens their mouth and you just squirt everything and then they're fine. And you just hold the mouth closed so that they swallow and it's fine. It's like super easy. That's what I've done my whole life with dogs. Chili is super small, like her head is about that big. So you don't want to hold, like I try to hold her down, but she's so small that you don't want to, you know, you don't want to hurt her. So I hold her down and I say, I'm going to grab her. But then I'm like, oh, maybe I'm grabbing her too tight. Like, no, that's gonna, that I can't like hold her head too much. 
And if if I try to open her mouth, she like squirms and it's like this tiny mouth. So ugh. it is not easy. <laughs> Dime. So, so, um, Catherine was saying hi, Daniel Nicolas. Hi, chat. Hey, Catherine. Hey, Catherine. How are you? Peter Smeekins was saying, I usually paint Sorn ish, but always ended too muddy. So now I'm filling a sketchbook using exercises inspired by your channel. Complimentaries, random pig tubes, colors that scare me, etc., etc. Oh, that's so that's cool. That's very cool. Because that's also the best way to get to know the palette you really need to yeah. build. Like your own palette. Yeah, and to lose that, that kind of um, fear that comes from thinking that oh, maybe this new color is just something that I don't understand or I'll never be able to, to, um, to put to use in my own painting. And just instead of taking that as granted, um, you just force yourself to say, okay, let's let's do a couple of paintings. Like, yeah. what's the harm in doing like five paintings with this palette? And let's see what happens. It's in the end, it's like five pages of a sketchbook, and it you know it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's... and to to also revisit revisit uh, tubes of color that you wanted but maybe because i think that has happened to me that you were scared to use mm -hmm. it's awesome because you feel that i mean we've talked about this a lot but adding a color is just not adding the color but all the relationships yeah as you say so i do feel that sometimes you buy it because you really want to use it and something in you tells you that it's going to be a great thing to add yeah but then you're just like oh no it feels too much and you just like leave it to the side so if you give yourself the chance to try yeah to use it i think maybe you realize like the thing in your brain that little thing in your brain that told you that you need it was there for something because maybe it is a great fit for you and what you need in your palette um Parting Mist was saying, I think you can paint anything even with limited palette because the specific color is not as important as the relationship between colors. Yes. And Parting Mist was also saying, because I bought Cat Red Medium at first, but I didn't like it, but I didn't like how it mixed too much. So I got Cat Red Light too. If oh, I yeah. had to drop one, I dropped the Cat Red Medium. Okay. And they were saying, well, if you want high chroma, you can't really mix well, since mixing tends to bring chroma down. Yeah. So I'd love to have some cat red orange. Yeah. If the chroma is high enough, every color is primary. Mm. Andres Garces was saying, do you recommend using vermilion or cat red light in the Sorn palette? Oh, if you can afford it, just go ahead. If you're going for like um, faithful, faithful um, Zorn palette, then you kind of need um, yep. uh, flake white, lead white, and you kind of need a um, a vermilion. You can buy vermilion nowadays, but it's very expensive. It's very very pricey. So if if you can afford it, yeah, sure, beautiful. It's a gorgeous color. I mean, it, it has the the hue of cad red. It's very close to that. Um, but it doesn't have the sort of overpowering kind of nature of cad red, which is a very strong pigment. So a lot of people that can afford it 
like it way more than Cad Red because they feel they can handle it a little bit easier rather than just being, you know, sort of subjected by this overpowering nature of Cad Red. Rebecca Caridad was saying, Hi, Nico and Danny. Rebecca I've, Caridad. I've been loving the more colorful pieces lately. Oh, thank you. Thank you. This one's very, uh, um, you know, uh, I feel like I'm painting like uh, George Pratt. So, which is not a bad thing at no, all. George I is mean, amazing. Yeah. She, he's one of my heroes when uh, So a when Phil Halish composition. I think, yeah, I would even Pratt. say it's very George Prattish, to yeah. be very honest. No, and I was going to say, and a George Pratt. Yeah. Like I didn't in the combo. It it is. When I was, when I, even, when I drew it, I didn't see it. Now that I'm painting it and, and totally with these colors, I'm like, oh, I'm like channeling my uh, love for, uh, for George. 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 Yeah. He's amazing, George Pratt. He's incredible. Andres Garces dice, Nicolás, I'm sure you've talked about it before, maybe a million times. Oh, no worry. Ask again. But I'm curious about why you paint an unprimed paper. Um, I'll give you the short end of it, but um, the whole story is about... Uh, or go with the whole one. Well, no, I'll, I'll try to <laughs> summarize it just for, for people that already know it and just uh, can't stand the sound of my voice when I repeat stuff and for people that are new. But um, I remember seeing, um, going to Poland and seeing uh, the painter that I wanted to see, which was Jan Matejko. So I went to Warsaw and I saw Jan Matejko's painting there and I was... You know, I, I felt like, yes, this is this was the purpose of my trip. This is amazing. Like, this is the painting that I wanted to see. I went to the Royal Castle and I went to um, the Warsaw National Museum where they have the uh, Battle of Grunwald. And, uh, and I was like, yes, this is, you know, one of the largest paintings that you'll ever see. Largest, like, historical paintings that you'll ever see. That canvas is, like, nine and some meters long. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's one of the largest paintings ever. Like, easel paintings ever. For sure. And, um, um, and and so I was like, yeah, this is what I wanted. Uh, and I gave myself, because I, I went straight to that painting, but I gave myself the chance to then start to look at Polish painting, it, which was like a complete blind spot in my life. And I, I started walking around and I saw people that were so talented that I had never, ever heard of. Um, and... When I saw Olga Wozniacka's work, I was, you know, immediately floored. Like, I don't know. I, I don't know how else to explain it. It's like you you look at a ton of work and I was looking at Gerimsky. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but I was looking at Matejko's and Malshevsky's, uh, Josef Brandt's. I was, I was seeing uh, uh, Wojciech Weiss. I was seeing like so many, so, so many talented painters. And... Everything kind of stopped when I started looking at some of the Boznanskas that they have uh, there. And it just, I don't know, it threw me off. It's one of those moments that you know that something is happening that is, it's like important for your life. It's, it's you know, that it speaks to you in ways that nothing that you've seen had. And for me, it was super easy to understand why it was different because I had seen this Mateco painting that I had traveled to see. I had, the, like, my only reason for going to Poland. I mean, this. I, I'm not saying that Poland's not a wonderful place. It's a beautiful country, um, but I was in my art trip and I was just searching for paintings. So I was going to specific countries throughout Europe just to see specific paintings. But obviously, I was giving myself the chance to look at everything else. But that's what you do on a trip. But um. But it was very important for me to see that Mateko painting. And um, and when I saw the Boznanska, I could compare my what I had thought were the expectations that I had with Mateko, which were super big. I, I could compare that feeling of wanting to see something that I understood to be very important for me with the feeling of discovering something that was completely new and that just bowled me over. So one of the things that happened in, in Bosnanska's painting is that she would paint on cardboard, on like raw cardboard, like a piece of 
you know, 19th, like late 19th century cardboard. So the most acidic thing ever created by man, for sure. And it's raw cardboard. And I never gave it like, I, I always kept that in my mind that she painted on raw cardboard and, and as if like that was something, because I, I remember seeing um, Toulouse Lautrec doing the same thing. So I remember thinking, well, yeah, these people just grabbed some cardboard, you know, in the late 19th century and they just painted on it and that's that's what they did. But I never put two and two together in thinking that your substrate could affect so much the way you paint. And um, it was purely, you know, um, like arbitrary. It was coincidental that we were doing our painted lives. And because we were painting so much, I had like a roll of linen that I that I had started but I hadn't used and I was cutting that linen up to do some paintings and I was working on paper because I had done like previously I had done like a um, uh, uh, sketchbook you know sort of conceptually I had worked on my sketchbook for a long time but I was priming all my pages in my sketchbook for sure and um, and at some point I ran out of my primer, what I was using as a primer, which was a transparent acrylic binder. And I ran out of my my roll of uh, pre-primed linen, which was very nice, very like super, super fancy, nice. I ran out of it, but you can't get that here in, in Colombia. So, you know, it's not as if I could go to the store to get some. And um, I had no other uh, surface, no other substrate to paint on. And I said, well, let's start to paint on paper and I'll just not prime it and it's totally fine. And I started painting and I remember, I think it was that week that I told Danny, I, I think I loved it. Like I, something's happening, but I love this. Like it was immediate. It wasn't like a thing that you say, oh, this is so annoying. Like paint is, is, you know, pushing paint on top of paper. It's just, ugh. You know, it almost feels like you're 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 painting with clay and you have to like brush really hard and you have to use a ton of paint. It wasn't annoying at all. It was it was just perfect. It was just right. And um and you know, up until that point I just had never considered, but what eventually started happening and this don't, you know, misconstrue this as me saying that I can paint like Olga Oznanska cuz she is like a million times the painter that I'll ever be. She She's like light years ahead of anything that I'll ever be able to do. But having like said that, and trust me, like I can easily accept all those shortcomings that I have when compared to her. Um, but when I started painting on paper, I started to understand a lot of the things that I loved about her own painting that were possible by working on a surface that is raw so it's you know part of her was yes her obvious genius that it that's something that you can't really sort of um um quantify you can't really say how do i paint like her like i want my painting to look like hers it's like oh yeah sure after you have your painting look like rembrandt then try to make it look like hers like you can't make a painting look like somebody else's that's absurd um but you know, in terms of the surface quality, in terms of paint handling, in terms of how paint felt, you know, on top of a substrate, I started noticing, I was like, oh, wow, the, the, those things that I love about her work seem to be achievable. Again, I'm talking about surface quality and how painting just presents itself to you in, you know, when you apply it on, 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 a, on a raw surface. I'm not talking what you do then with the paint. Like, you know, I do whatever, my paintings, but she did just genius work. Um, but when I started spotting those things, I was like, oh my God, this is, this is it. Like, this is what I've been looking for. And I've never stopped. Like I, I have, I'm a very strange creature of habit. So when I find something that really speaks to me, I'm just, I'm there, I'm done. It, it's almost like, it's not about experimenting like, oh, I want to paint on a sink and I want to paint on um, some uh, uh, dead leaves. Um, no, no, no. I don't want to paint on like painting on a surface. It's not just about like saying, oh, I want to paint on any surface and imaginable. Like that's what experimenting means. No, no, no. Like I think that my openness to do things is what brought me to paint on this surface. And it just happened to 
coincide with something that I've been looking for for a long, long time. Um, but it doesn't mean that's, first of all, it doesn't mean that's for everyone. Like it's very clear. A lot of people have tried it and think it's the worst thing ever. So it's not for everyone. And, um, and it doesn't, and you know, it's a surf in the end, at the end of the day, it's a substrate. Like it doesn't get me close, closer to painting like she did. Cause that's impossible. Um, so substrates don't do that. Brushes don't do that. You know, paints don't do that. Um, but you know, in, in a way it, it can help you understand what it was that you were looking for. And it can tell you like, Hey, I can get you closer to that. And I, I think that that's what I've been feeling with, um, with paper. So it is, it's almost like a non-negotiable for me. And, you know, I, I, a, a million things can happen in life that I, let's say, for example, I can't either like afford the paper, I can't get the paper anymore, whatever it is, I'll paint on something else. But but now I know how important, like I can recognize how important it has been for me to paint on this paper. And it's it has nothing to do with paper. It has nothing to do with, with that particular paper, which I, you know, I use a moleskin paper, but it has nothing to do with this particular paper. I mean, I've tried other paper, um, throughout our exercises. So it's totally fine. Um, uh, it, it's more about understanding that you can have, like when you find it and you can find it in the, in the, in the places where you least expect, you can find like this powerful synergy between your materials and your intent that makes everything make sense. Everything, everything makes sense. And I think that that's what happened to me. And so I'm, I'm super happy for, for making that discovery for myself. Again, it doesn't have to be important for anyone else. Like I care less if, if like a hundred people tell me how non-archival it is or how dumb a decision it is, or how I'm never going to be able to exhibit that seriously or whatever. I mean, there's tons of like dumb, stupid things that people can say or, or people have said, um, but it doesn't matter. Like none of it matters. Like, like obviously connecting with something and feeling like you you can become a better painter in the sense that you're being a more faithful painter to what you're supposed to be is way more important than anything that other people can say. You know, I, I don't care about what other people can say. So uh, that's the, I was going to start with the short version and I gave you the long version. So sorry for that. Nano Espinosa dice, hola chicos, los escucho mientras trabajo. Qué ¿Cómo bueno. les va con el nuevo bebé perrito? Sí, eh, estábamos diciendo... Muy bien, Nano está... Comienzo que estaba... Está enfermita, enfermita ahorita. ahorita sí. Pero muy bien, es divina, es la mejor perrita del mundo. Sí, sí. Y se va a mejorar pronto. Sí, seguro. Eh, Luis Fernando Bernal dice... No he podido entender bien tu uso de la espátula y raspados. ¿Podrías hablar del uso de esta? Sí, no es tanto para aplicar pintura, sino es como para empujar pintura, yo creo. La uso más como para suavizar ¿Ni bordes. ¿Ni para mezclar? Sí, no la uso ni para mezclar ni para aplicar. Es más como para raspar y como para empujar una pintura hacia el, a otra. Sí, creo que es más eso. Eh... Catherine was saying, I'm sorry to hear that Chile is so sick, yeah. but you're so caring, so I'm sure that she'll be running around and quote-unquote killing again Kill in Chile. no time. No, yeah. no, no, you're waking her up. Well, it, it, maybe that's the call that she needed to hear. No. Chile, kill. Look. Yeah, she gets it. <laughs> Look at her little killing machine. Oh, she's got so much snot on her nose. Really? Yeah. Let me read this and I'll be back in one sec. Uh, Catherine was also saying, I love the light on Danny's face in the painting. I have never used the teal color and I'm amazed by the result when you mix it with magenta. It becomes oh, so yeah. blue magic. Oh, it's crazy. It's, well, it's a blue violet, but yes, it's, it's, so, it's super, super powerful. It's really quite beautiful. Gracias, Lindita. Todo por la chilaquile. Chilaquil Bill. Sí, pero también es porque está haciendo frío ahorita. No, no. 
súper bien la chili. Tiene los ojitos en el cool, la chili. Sí, está toda pestadita. No, pero tú sí. We are like, because she's been feel, feeling so, like, badly, we are like bombarding her with treats. So I think she's going to come out of the, uh, the cold obese, but we'll deal with that later. We'll do some extra walks afterwards. Or Danny, yeah. That's a uh, Danny department there. I wouldn't have minded when I was sick when I was little. My mother was like, oh, you look so sick. Let's order pizza. Fantastic. Oh, every, yeah, every meal, mom. What are you talking about? Yes. I don't think, I don't think I'm getting better. ¿De qué, Linda? ¿Sí? Ah, bueno, súper. Ah, pero pues bueno, pasa nada. So. So. So, so, so. Eh. Carla Anglada was saying, Sweet Chili will regain her mighty strength with all the love and care from you both. Yes, let's hope she gets uh, better quickly. Please, Chilita. I'm gonna let her in the ground to see if she wants to walk or pee or poo. Or all of them at the same time. Yeah. A ver, dice. A ver, dice. <laughs> A ver, dice. Uh -huh. Marta Lucía. <laughs> um, no. She's even walking up as if she's like hurting. Look. Oh, right now, yeah. no. No, she's, she's like, like a subtle trot. Yeah. Sneezing trot. And then she eats her boogers. And then she goes to pee. Yeah, yeah good. I, good job. That's good. Yeah. Oh, so I'll be back in another sec. No, 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 she's... Eh, Carla Gómez dice, ¿en algún momento tu aplicación en tu pintura ¿Sí? fue usando difuminados? No, no, nunca. No, no, no. Eh, siempre me ha gustado la pintura como directa. O sea, poner color, masas de color contra masas de color. Entonces nunca me acostumbré a usar nada, ni por ejemplo un difumino en dibujo, ni, ni pinceles suaves como para difuminar el color, para suavizarlo, para que no hubiera como bordes en la pintura. No, nunca me, me acostumbré como a eso. Me gustaba, siempre me atraía mucho más, era el poner, poner, poner color, como... And solo this for like two minutes. No, 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 it's okay. No, no, I'm good, I'm good. Oh, no, I'm good. Uh... 
have you uh, uh, any tip for a beginner uh, draftsman? Says Yuri. Yuri Alberto Costa. So, Yuri Alberto Yuri Costa. Alberto Costa who's saying, hello everyone. Nico, you're my biggest inspiration. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. You have any tip for a beginner draftsman? Draftman? Oof. Draft. Um, a beginner. So keep a sketchbook. Draw as much as you can. Like, uh, be... I think initially when drawing, you, you really have to be um, uh, quite on top of it, to be honest. Like, later on, you can, you know, slow down a little bit because it's not as if drawing is not a thing that, that if, um, it, you know, you get better and better and then best, best, best is God, you know. You can just uh, become um, familiar with your tool, with the tool of drawing that you have. But people that I've always respected, for example, in terms of like uh, great drafts people, it's not as if they get better and better every year, as if there's like a, a you know, like a quantifiable way to understand what better means. Um, if you if you think of like uh, Heinrich Klei, for example, or F.R. Gruger, um, Joseph Clement Cole, like illustrators that are just like great at drawing, um, it, it doesn't mean that they got better and better and better and better. And by the end of their lives, it's where they got best at drawing. Um, not really. Drawing is, you, you always like fight against um, the fundamentals of things. And the fundamentals of drawing just happen to be, you know, very, very beautiful, very simple, but very tough to, to um, try to, let's say, master. Um, and you can just, spend the rest of your life just attempting to to um to become more familiar with those fundamentals but it's not as if you get better and better and better and better i'll give you an example like kim jung gi didn't get better uh he just did more drawing uh james jean i think he when he was 20 he was probably as good as what you see today uh so he just did more drawing but he it's not as if he was doing better drawing you could be you could be inclined to like something that he does today and speaking about James, for example, today as compared to something that he did before, but they were good. Esau Andrews, he was a genius when he was young. He was that good when he was young. So I don't know. I think it's not a matter of getting better, but you just do something different with what you already, with the, this tool that you already have. Um, so I think initially all you have to do is just be super consistent, you know, draw as much as you can study as much as you can study. If studying means copying, um, old masters work, other people's work that you respect and studying that, why those images work, then do that incessantly. If you can draw from life, do that as much as you can. If you can go to, um, to um, life drawing, um, open uh, studios, do that also. So just do it as much as you can. It's it's very, very important just to make it a part of, of, to start to understand drawing as something that is, you know, just part of your regular life. Um, and I think that's important. If you need, if you need like basics, um, there's plenty of great books out there. There's plenty of like, um, tutorials out there that are fantastic. If you need a little bit of uh, structure to the way you want to um, to draw, I can tell you, I had like um, we we were prompted to um, to follow the directions of every single teacher that we had. Like we were asked to like respect what they would say. So I am not like a a believer in that you just have to learn one way of doing something and then keep at it. Like that's going to be your technique or that's going to be, because when I was taught, when I was young, I was taught by like five different people, maybe how to draw. And they all asked different things of you. All of them. They, all of them were like annoyed when you started drawing and, and they were like, they could recognize that you were maybe favoring one way of drawing from another teacher. And they would be like, I'll oh, leave that you know, leave that in the, you know, at the door. When you come in, you draw like how I ask you to draw. So I kind of taught my brain how to be, and I think this was most of us, we just taught our brain how to be receptive to the, the way in which 
our teachers just asked us to, you know, to, to, um, to be sensitive to. And, um, and so I, I really didn't have like one way to draw. I just liked drawing. And in this, in, and in that sense, I think I'm the same way with painting. I was never really inclined towards one way of painting. I just love painting. And I think that openness can, can lead you to explore and to understand, um, techniques like far more integrally than, than just schools of thought. Like there's for sure schools of thought in everything that you do. But, um, but I think that if you just open yourself up, you, you realize, oh, wow, this is broader than what I thought it was. I just thought it was a way of like, oh yeah, I have to draw contours and that's what I'm going to favor. But then you realize that, okay, it's not quite about drawing contours. It's actually bigger than this. And I could use this manner of drawing to emphasize this thing when I'm painting. So, um, I don't know. The, the more tools that you have under your belt, I think the better. So the more that the more you push yourself to be able to be kind of re receptive to other ways of working, then the better. But just, you know, initially when you start with drawing, oof, you need a lot of work and that's fine because it's not as if things are going to get easier. Like you're always going to have to work. Did you move the, I'm sorry, did you move the screen? Yeah, I did. I was trying okay. to read. So sorry, sorry. No, 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 no. I was just like, what's weird about yeah, the what is setup. wrong with you what the hell yeah. dude what the hell is going on with you yeah so sketchbook um study copy go to class go to life drawing studios whatever you have available to you but just be consistent like super super consistent okay just don't let go initially because drawing has a way of making you feel stupid very quickly and just don't let it get you down. It's very tough at the beginning and don't worry. It never, it never lets go. Like it's very tough by the end of your life. I feel that I feel I'm going to be complaining about ellipses, like not being able to draw ellipses, uh, when I'm, you know, in my deathbed. So I'll try to do that, Danny, just so you know, I'll, my last drawing is just going to be a bad ellipses. <laughs> Like a bad ellipse. Or maybe the best. Like you... Could you imagine? You get... If I like uh, Giotto it. You know, yeah. Giotto is famous for doing that Or circle. you Spongebob it. <laughs> yeah. As in Spongebob and I'm like, in give the me, Give me my class. brush. Yeah. And supposedly Giotto, I think it was Giotto. He did, if I'm remembering my uh, Vas Vasari. Uh, he, he got a commission from the Pope. Like the Pope was hoping to see like a um, cartoon for a, uh, I don't know, it was probably like some, some annunciation or some um, Madonna and child or something like that. And, um, and Giotto was supposed to send that drawing. And all he did was like, you know, freehand this circle, like perfect. Circle. And he sent that like piece of paper to the Pope and the Pope was like, Oh my God. And he got the commission. So it's, very, I think it, I, I may be misremembering this, but not really. I think that's a very famous story of Giotto. So. Well, the second best uh, circle after Spongebob's. Okay, but so. it's Giotto. Giotto. It's Spongebob, so. Uh, let's see. Juan Delgado dice, ¿Es posible ver la referencia? Eh, muchas veces se la mostramos. Sí. Hoy, eh, a veces hoy no decidimos. La, hoy no, no la tengo. Hoy no, la... no, 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 no. Pero pues iba a decir que a veces... Muchas veces eh, también decidimos, ¿no? Eh, sí, pero tranquilo, eh. es, es parecido a esto, pero mejor. Sí, gracias. <risa> <risa> eh, incluso creo que pueden ver un bordecito ahí a la izquierda de la pintura. Un bordecito de la pintura, porque se alcanza a ver un poquito del celular. Vamos, Chile. Vamos, Chile. No, déjala, déjala. Ella tose ahí, ella, ella solita ahí se le pasa. Grande Chili, vamos. Vamos, Chili. Ahí va, ahí va la Chili. Uh, Dofo was saying gesture. Oh, oh kill Chili. Yeah. Chili's back. That's great. See? Wow. Kill Chili. Um... 
Yuri Alberto Costa was saying, okay, thanks for the answer. And some heart emojis. Vato was saying, hello, Nicolás. Hello, Vato. Mm. Let's see. Have you ever seen uh, George Pratt using a roller to draw? Mm. He is so good. Maybe oh I my God, I've, tr I've wanted to try that for the longest time. He's so freaking good. <laughs> Chili. And our neighbors are already annoyed at her. Yeah. Because she's just like. But I don't know why. Every time cause... they step out, she's like, I hate you. I hate you. Yeah, like, but you I are have the to... thing that I hate most in my life. I have to be honest. I think, I mean, I know I told you about this, but I don't know if I told everyone about this. Go chili, kill. And it is that uh, for New Year's... Kill chili. So she was way smaller than she is now. Yeah. And um, I, I was here with her. You yeah. were already at your mother's house. Yeah. <laughs> and... Um, I she was waiting stop, for my by, parents. By the way, she'll only stop when they when go they inside the, the house or yeah. inside the house. Yeah, it's like take your visit like inside, lady. Yeah, don't and she's be like a nice mine. old, like older lady. Yeah, but Chili's not having any of it. She's no, but like, but let me tell this story. Okay, sorry, I'm sorry. So, I um, I was waiting for my mom, and yeah. my dad. Yeah. To pick me up to yeah. go celebrate, uh, the new year. Yeah. And I was holding Chili right near, like near the door. Yeah. I was like in the floor holding her. Mm -hmm. And I told you that there were some kids. Mm -hmm. I think they're, they were like the like family of the neighbor, okay. maybe. Yeah. yeah. And they were talking outside. So Chili went to the door and she like sniffed. Yeah. Uh, and they were like, oh, a dog. And they started like making noise at the door like they were like knocking hard like super hard okay so little kids. and she what so they were knocking at our door yeah they were like knocking so little kids because yeah big, little you know, kids. kids but she yeah. was very scared so i told you that she run and she was like trying to hide down my desk okay and then and yeah. then i grabbed her and you told her kill chili no that's you and right. then my uh parents picked me up but she was like very calm that day and that night was terrible. Like uh. she was super stressed. And I feel that she was scared since. I mean, because before she didn't Did bark. you hear the, some mother saying like, hey, what are you doing knocking on? Like, what are you doing? Kids? No, because they were like, hey, a dog. And they were like, no, stop it, stop it. And they went into the elevator, elevator and that was it. Okay. Yeah, but, but I'd be like, okay. that was enough for traumatizing okay, kids. Yeah, I was like, I'm sorry, but that's not okay. No. Kids. Freaking kids. So. Eh, Federico García Rojas dice, primera vez que los veo. Felicidades y gracias por tanto trabajo y retroalimentación en torno a la pintura. No, muy amable. Federico, bienvenido. Muchas sí, gracias muchas por acompañarnos. Gracias. Muy amable. Y muchas gracias por todo lo que dice Federico. El dinero que nos envió. <risa> eh... Catherine was saying, aha, I hear chili power again. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it was a power nap. I love that she was like sneezing like crazy. And then, then she like, was like, now I have to bark. Yeah. And th then so, oh, it's on. Yeah. It's on, neighbors. Um, Carla Anglada was saying, in figure drawing class, the teacher would have us draw on big paper, but only looking at the model and not the paper. I love that exercise. Oh, that's a super, like blind drawing exercises are super cool. Yeah, they are cool. I did that uh, when I was having like a um, theor theoretical class. I don't know how to call it. Yeah, like okay. a theory class. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What? No, how do you no, call no. those? What? No. Like, I don't know. Clase teórica. Yeah, sure. How do you call them? I'm asking. I don't, I don't know. Okay. Theory like, class, I guess. Yeah. And sometimes I would just do that. So I would pay attention to the teacher and what they were saying. But I would be trying to do a drawing of what I was seeing. Yeah. While 
I was paying attention. So it was great because I was not looking at the paper and paying attention to the paper, but I was like multitasking. Nice. Yeah. Um, let's see. Parting Mist was saying, Carla Anglada, that is a fun technique. You can even get a decent result if you keep at it. But I only ever got scribbles. Uh, Carla was saying, yes, Parting Mist, and I feel a different concentration from it. Yes. Oh, yeah. There's, there's something that you can achieve that is not that you're not able to achieve with like um, more traditional ways of approaching drawing for sure. Yeah. It's not, so it's not just like a dumb little exercise. It's actually like quite fascinating. The things that you, that you start to um, uncover. Are they for everyone? No, not really. They don't have to be for everyone, but it, it, it does work. Juan Delgado was saying theoretical. There we go. Yep. I don't know if she wants me to hold her. Mm -hmm. She's just like chilling. No, oh, that's, that's what she knows. It's the one thing she knows how to do. So, Rebecca Caridad was saying, blind counter drawing is a great way to pass the time when you're waiting for food, when you're at a restaurant. Oh, nice. Yeah. I think I have never done that, but it sounds like a great way to wait. Wait. If you are... Wait. If you are um, by yourself, like waiting for your meal. Sure. Sounds great, yeah. I would ask for the crayons. And crepes. <laughs> yeah, I would ask for the uh, crayons and say, okay, give me the table. Mm, Van Sant de la Noir. Ooh la la. Is saying, hi, Danny, Nicolas, and Chili. Ooh la la. Hi, Van Sant. How are you? Uh, OG1, OG1 Kenobi. <laughs> oh, nice. Is saying, yeah, okay. hi from Norte Carolina. Okay, yeah. Hello, welcome. Um, yeah, hi from Colombia, Bogota, there Colombia. My usual one. one, not north or south, there's just one. One Bogota, yeah. Um, I went to Raleigh, that's uh, all I know from uh, North Carolina. Very nice. Van Sant was saying, I'm fine, thank you. That's great to know, Van Sant. What are you doing right now? Should be sleeping. And Van Sant was saying, the girls are enjoying holidays in Lugano, Switzerland. What? How are you doing? Oh, that's great. That's great. So you are enjoying um, your house? Yeah. <laughs> by yourself? Being alone. Um, it's the uh, best gift ever. OG1 Kenobi was saying, love your energetic style of painting. Yeah, Ra Raleigh is cool. Is a cool town. Uh, Rebeca Caridad. Rebeca Caridad. We're saying, or take, turn, or take turns with the person you are with. It's fun because even people who are not artists can do it. Yeah, you know, there is a place here where you can eat wings. Yeah. And uh, they have like a, they put. I wish like I almost wish you would have stopped there. Big, you know, Rebecca. <laughs> there's a place here where you could eat wings. Yeah, it's really good. Van Sant says yeah. that, <laughs> and they put a paper as the mantel. How do you say the mat? That? The mat. Yeah, and they give you crayons, crayons, while you wait. Crayons. Crayons. Yeah, you sound it southern. Crayons. Like. Yeah, no, that was terrible. But not terrible. It's just no. The southern. the one I did at the end. It oh, sounded yeah, very where you forced. were trying. Yeah. Yes. Crayons. Hands. Okay, that's now that you're like just killing it. And um, 
you could draw and it was very cool it was very cool when i went with my family yeah like my sister and my parents because we all did things i mean my mom was always like her go-to was to play tricky okay yeah tic-tac-toe tic-tac tic-tac-toe that's how you call it yeah oh i was gonna say tricky like tricky. the same thing but with yeah. an accent no that would have been nice <laughs> and uh my sister used to draw and then she would just like reflect on how she has an idea in her brain and then draws and get something very different yeah i so always drawing. told her that that is drawing yeah. yeah so drawing in a nutshell yes and my dad used to draw too which was cool do you remember you what you drew i would draw things i mean sometimes we were like let's do a drawing of this or that oh my sister was like that is so true oh let me be cheese so my sister is here oh She's that's listening. a rare do you appearance. remember rare when appearance. we went to it wings and just make drawings and my mom would do tic-tac-toe and my dad would do um uh, like i would say my dad used to do more like architectural drawings okay so he because he's an architect so he would go for drawing a house or like perspective like punto de fuga i don't know how to say that okay, in english yeah. but yeah yeah nice it was it was very fun do you remember what you used to do no I, i think i i mean i'm gonna sound like very repetitive spongebob yeah i mean no and i remember when i was younger i did a drawing of uh squidward yeah and i liked it so i always did a drawing of squidward nice like in different poses because i do remember that they caught some of the drawings that they liked or oh, they would put them up they or put something an, yeah nice did you But, get a squid word up no 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 because also i would do the squid word and then i would eat the wings on top of it okay well he he um he uh spilled the ink. Ki- squid word oh that was yeah, good. pretty good yeah, yeah thank you um so parting mist was saying it's always a pleasure daniela nicolas till next time oh so, same have a good afternoon parting mist We are sad you are parting, oh, but we Christ. hope you come again I think she left at a good soon. time, I think. Um, Van Sant de la Noire was saying, la. I had more time to paint and a happy face. I know. And Van Sant. Van Sant's been killing it in the uh, course. And Van Sant was saying, I see that Nicolas is doing his homework. That's great. <laughs> You're doing a good job and a happy <laughs> face. Merci, Van Sant. Merci. <laughs> Mm. Wait, how do you say amable in um, French? Could you could you search? Amicable. <laughs> no, oh, know. maybe. No, maybe there's know. some maybe it's it it can be something like that. Maybe. Uh so is no, so French. Oh. Ooh la la. Amable. So a it is I'm going to say how it is spelled. Okay. Amable. So, so a, a, a amable. Amable. A très amable. Amable. I went with Vincent. amicable. Oh, very so nice. Amicable, yeah. but no. Amable. A- and how how am this I a uh, bull? Am I or a bull? Am I not? Or am I a cow? Or am I bold? Um, okay, yeah, that's a yes for me. No, bold. Not yeah, that's bold. A double yes for me. <laughs> um, could you search kind? Uh, kind? Yeah, just to see if it's... It, I mean, I'm sure there's oh, synonyms, but, but it's probably a different word. Wait, so English? English? Kind. Ka- Kind. It says type, but I don't know. What? No, it's like, just telling you to type. Kind of. So it may be like type. Kind type. What? In French? Yeah. Type. 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 But type. kind as in like this oh, kind people. of. Yeah, that's oh, what I'm no. saying. Like so, this oh, type of. Oh, this kind so that's of, not. Yeah, that's so not what we're looking for. Personality. No, I don't know if it contextualizes things. 
Yeah. It can? Really? Personalité amable. amable. Oh, so it is Am amable. I don't know how to say it, but... So it is amable. 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 Uh... So, Van Sant was saying, how to explain how to read it? B all E reads as ble, not bull. So, amable. amable. Like in Spanish. Amable. 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 No, amable. I don't know if it quite sounds amable. like Spanish. Amable. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, He's a tough teacher. Tough and French Van Sant teacher. was saying, Van kind Sant. equal aimable. Amable. Amable. Mm. amable. That's a good translation. No, Vincent, I, I think you would be... No. How the hell... What the hell was was that? Sorry, our robot thing started playing music. I'm telling you, AI is and going crazy. Vincent was saying, you don't say the E at the end. So I'm it's... A I'm a a I'm a I'm a I'm a <laughs> no, because you're not saying... Play, I'm a... B <laughs> Uh, très wow. amable. Très amable. Is it amable or amable? There's a slight difference. Very slight, I would say. Amable, amable. Okay, that's like <laughs> no difference at all. No, like the intonation, intonation, and intonation. Mm -hmm. Is that a mm -hmm. <laughs> in English? Mm -hmm. Like the C, so you say intonacion completa. Right, oh, keep going, keep going. I love that when you say keep going, is because you also have no idea. No, of course you can say intonation. Intonation. Yeah. In the intonation. A, it's a nation of Antonia. Amable, amable. You still sound like Bell, not Bull. Is saying Van, Sa Van yeah. Sant is saying that. So, amable. I don't know how to say amable. Oh, oh this is amable, amable. A national of Amable. I think. Très I think, amable. I think. Très amable. Okay. Amable. No, no, no. Strange French sounds. Now you're French being très annoying. <laughs> I'm always annoying. Um, so, OG1 Kenobi was mm -hmm. saying, followed you guys on Insta. Can we throw out our Instagram info here in the chat, please? Or is that against the rules? No, no dude, I mean, we go got, ahead. Like, rules, rules that we have here are basic, just Be human kind, respect. Yeah, if you're not kind, yeah, you can't get blocked. Then it's like chili kill. Yeah, no, que la levanta. You're on Chili's uh, death list. Uh, but, but no, if, you, if of you course you can. Cool, oh, just put your Instagram. That's totally fine. Uh, Carla Anglada was saying, I saw on Edward Kinholz. Okay. Yeah. Installation oh, called geez. the State Hospital. Hus hospital. It was thought provoking for me. Yeah. Do you and Nicolas like installations? Oh, holds? I love. No, no, no. Okay. Installations. Okay. Yeah, very much. Oh yeah, very much. For sure. I used to. Um, like I was very inclined to do installations when I was studying in the university. I did a couple. Like I always thought about. The things that I was showing as an installation, even if I was um, like doing sculptures, I would think about an installation of the sculptures, not only the sculptures by itself, it, if it makes sense. Yeah. Like for me, the, the installation was part of the thinking process. And what I did. So, yeah, I enjoy them very much. I think I think almost every every, let's say, um, language has been affected by by um the sort of consciousness of of a work of art um being part of a space yes i really do i think you know it's if you see a great painting show there's probably like a sometimes subtle and other times more like overtly there but a sense of of how you know that you want to install painting into a space you want to insert insert painting yes. into a space and how that affects the reading yeah the like the whole atmosphere that people are going to have when they encounter your piece so yes <coughs> yeah but and kinholtz i don't know if you're familiar with kinholtz but i don't know if i am oof it's very it's super super eerie mm -hmm. tough it's also heavy very heavy subject matter too. Um, uh, 
beautiful stuff. I mean, it's totally up my alley for sure. It's kind of like, um, I would say very much like, um, like an Anselm Kiefer feel to it. It has like a Boltansky feel to this it. This is beautiful. Oh, you know, this uh, one specific, this Edward uh, Kinholz, is yeah. that the good way? Kinholz, to... yeah. That's Kinholz? the way to pronounce okay. it. Yeah. It's called the soup course at mm -hmm. the Shishi Cafe. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but just by the thumbnail of what I'm seeing, I'm being remembered of um, Marisol's sculpt sculptures. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you can see it here, but yeah. look at this. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's 100%. 100%. That's probably like 60s, right? Not early 60s, so, mid 60s? Let me see. Uh, it says... Mm, no, 1982. Oh, wow, so that's old. Yeah, because I was thinking that's probably like 60s feel. There's a, like a 60s feel to that, but that's a little bit older than yeah but i mean as soon as i saw it i was thinking about marisol escobar i know it's very different but it, it is just like no but I, i understand why you would see <clears throat> equivalency because it looks like the uh sculptures she did with yeah, uh those wood are those are crazy those are good. amazing those are so good yeah this one <sighs> no i one, love so it great You know who did work that is not like that? Um, uh, me. Uh, <gasps> Have you seen this little dog? I'm sorry, no, but this is really good. great. Uh, can I save the image? And, yeah, of course. Um, oh, I love this. Julie, I'm sorry I woke you up. <sighs> no, I can't. Why not? It's a web, I don't know, it's web a... uh, whatever. It can't be downloaded securely. Oh, like go there. No, it says discard. No, oh, I don't keep. care. Yeah. Really? Okay. No, I was going to say, um, <sighs> Hockney did work. Like, I think it was 60s or 70s. That is like super weird. Like you wouldn't imagine that that was Hockney. It's so cool. And it's very But like sculptural and painting. It's really weird, like poppy. It's super, super cool. But... I don't know which, like, which pieces are you referring to specifically? I saw them. You at know the... that I love Hogni. Yeah, yeah, lot, yeah. So. No, I, I was, I was never aware of those. I only saw them at the retrospective. To be super honest mm -hmm. with you, I, I never knew that he would, he had that in his work. Let me see. Hmm. Well, I'm seeing some cat sculptures. Yeah, no, it wasn't quite a sculpture. Let me see if I can find it here. So it was like mixed media. Yeah, probably mixed. Let's check out. Because everything hugged me. I think he's just so cool. So. Um. I remember seeing those and feeling like, oh, wow, this dude has range. Oh, he does. Yeah, but like range that, I mean, you could understand why it was that, why he would do those sort of things at that time, because it's just what was like fashionable, I guess. But um, so interesting. Yeah. It's so different too. Very cool. We were talking about installation and you were talking about how the way that things are placed yeah in a show yes also talk about being conscious of the space yeah and i just saw this and oh, this is that's great yeah that's beautiful amazing. this is oh, beautiful you know, um sophie what, what was her name sophie oh little doll that i sh like yeah, that, that we, she has the cast the oh, cast shadows beautiful and, yes she yeah that she did like the is it is her name sophie i think it is but i don't remember the last name let me see if it's sophie sophie she's really trependall yeah sophie trependall oh she's crazy yeah crazy good yeah so if you want to see like a great example uh, of like an installed painting yeah i think i have it in my saved uh posts 
the installation she did because I think it was like a for a uh, thesis she yeah. did. Oh, I don't know so if it good. was like. Uh, yeah, but there's like a, a photo that is just uh, beautiful. Yeah. Yes. It's perfect. I love when everything is intentional. Yeah, everything just, reads intentional. She has like a light source, like a window, probably, and that's it. That's <laughs> it. But she has like she paints the bit of light that comes from the window like as like the source of hits. light on her painting yeah but then she paints like cast shadows on like little frames and little things that are up on the wall that is just so brilliant it's yeah. so simple but it's such a brilliant idea like great idea great ideas are usually so simple uh this one was just like just perfect let me see perfection So I think there's this one too. I mean, yeah, that's that's. I perfect. I don't know how to show this. I think it's easier for people to. Oh, um, just check her Instagram. Yeah, out. so I'm gonna write her Instagram handle because she's a an amazing painter. Yeah, she's very good. Yeah. So you should very very uh, cool. check her out. So it is uh, S O. Do you want me to spell it for you no. while you type? No, no. Perfect. So there it is. Um, so, um, Carla Anglada was saying it makes perfect sense, Danny. Um, so I would take that as a compliment. Mm. They see that Ooh. I'm interested in um, installations when they see my work. Yeah, for sure. I don't know if that was that. But please say it was Carla. Yeah. Because now I'm, I'm. Uh, Maybe she was talking about your French. <laughs> yeah. No, it sounds great. It makes, makes perfect, perfect sense, sense, Danny. At least for me, that I have no idea about French, yeah, Danny. Yeah, but it no clue what great. you're saying. Um. So Guy Bailey was saying my French is awful, but I, I thought kind is gentle. Great painting and chat as always. Thank you, guys. So gentle as in gentil. 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 Gentiles. Fragile. <laughs> um, Jatuki001 oh, was saying are hi, you Nicolas about and Yutaki? Danny. Yes. <laughs> um, Vincent de la Noa was saying, Nicolas, have Vincent. you tried Winsor oui. Newton's Orchid Paint? I uh, saw that oui, oui. Thomas. Gol Tommy Golunski yeah. is using their white for the fast drying Ooh. properties. It seems to be touch dry in two days. Mm. Although I would argue that my, uh, uh, my, uh, well, not mine, I'm not making it, but the, the white I use, I use yeah. Fonsant, the M gram uh, fast drying one, that paired with this paper. It does dry very quickly. I would say touch dry in two days also. So, um, and the only reason I say that is because I'm pretty sure that it has, I mean, they don't specify it. They just say, what is it that they say? Let me see. Let's check. What is it that they say? Okay, it says safflower oil. Oh no, it's not safflower, sunflower oil. It has... Alkali refined sunflower oil, uh, synthetic and synthetic resin. I am guessing, I mean, I, I wouldn't know why they would use synthetic instead of alkyd resin, but maybe anything that's not super natural, anything that's not oil and resin, like yeah. natural resins, they just say synthetic. Yeah. Uh, Maybe, perhaps that's why they say synthetic resin. It's a very... Or uh, maybe it's a way to not opaque disclose... Opaque way of describing it. Yeah, yeah. That's also like... Not disclose what they use. What the secret sauce is exactly. or something. But um, no, but I have tried Alkyd paint. It, it's very... I would say compared to the, for example, compared to the white that I do use, because I don't think Alkyd paint has oil. It's ground in oil. So compared to the one that I'm using, 
it's probably, which is, seems to be like half and half or whatever proportions that they use. You know, I have no idea. But um, compared to that, it's only ground on alkyd medium. So, you know, that's the vehicle for the paint. I don't, e I don't think they mix it with oil. I, I'm, I'm speaking somewhat, um, I'm s in a speculative manner, but I do remember when I used it, um, uh, looking up that stuff. So I don't think they, they, they mix it. Um, but I don't know. So yeah, so it would have an advantage if it's ground, um, only in, uh, alkyd medium for sure. Um, uh, but yeah, I think, I mean, I still have, you know, whatever, however long it is that it takes for, for my paint to dry. I think it's quick enough for me. I wouldn't say I need it quicker than that. So I'd, I'd be okay with, with what I have. Mario León dice... Mario Alberto León. Bonilla. Bueno, lo dejamos en... En visto, como siempre. No, no, no. Ah, o sea, perdón. pues lo exhibimos diciendo nombre, nombre doble, apellido. Uh -huh. Faltó decir la cédula. Uh -huh. Mario dice, hola, hace rato no los veía. De Hockney hay un libro bonito que dibuja a sus perros. Ahí a sus salchichitas. Al salchichita. Que se llama Dog Days. ¿Por qué pitos empieza tu no cosa? Sé. No hemos hablado, no le hemos Chuchu pedido. Chuchu ruso está diciendo el... No le hemos pedido que hable. Mira, Chili está... ¿Qué está sonando, Chili? Chili mata ese parlantico. Eh, qué pena, creo que no, no escucharon, pero nuestra asistente de voz. Eh, ¿Tú le dices así? Es que creo que así se llama cuando uno dice. Sí, estaba um, Jodiendo. diciendo, sí. Se mete en conversaciones. El perro, no, sabueso no le pide. o chuchu. ¿Qué fue lo que dijo chuchu? Chuchu. No, es chuchu meco. Eh, y Mario dice: para que lo vean, saludos. Eh, muchas Mario, gracias, Mario, muchas gracias. Seguro lo vamos a ver. Mario siempre tiene buenas recomendaciones y qué bueno saber de Mario. Sí. Eh, Mario que... siempre, como Héctor Mora, que esa es un, eh, eh, una referencia que solo Mario va a entender, eh, viajando por el mundo, eh, con la familia, la novia, la pareja. Qué pena a todas, pero Mario ya, ya está taken. taken. Sí, sí. sí. No, ca no, no cambió el, el estado de Facebook, pero no está disponible. No Nosotros está. tenemos el estado de Facebook juntos, ¿sabías? Tú me lo mandaste. ¿Sí? Sí. ¿Y qué como... dice? Pues que estamos juntos. Ah, bueno, así? entonces estamos bien, estamos bien. Estaba ¿Qué, qué muy nervioso, no sé. Pensé que me ibas a hacer como un reclamo. ¿Qué? ¿De no un sé, estado de no Facebook? Sé. No. Lo cambio, sígueme hablando y lo cambio. Eh, a ver. <coughs> Mm, bueno, miremos. Dog days. Dog days are over. Sí. Gran Dog days. Hockney. Miremoslo. Pero es que uf, todas las pinturas de las salchichitas. Es sí, muy lindo. Divino. Eh, a ver. Bueno, pero me alegra que. Que Mario los esté. Vecinos salgan, no. Ah. Para saber que Chili. Está con energía de ladrar. Eh, a ver. Mm. Carla Anglada was saying, it was, it was yes, and you're French too. And Carla was saying, oh, I spent a month in France. It was an incredible ah, time and place. It almost seems in French, you swallow the letter R. And in English, you spit the R. You definitely use your tongue differently. Okay. And in I'm Spanish, I mean, that. you you roll your R's in Spanish a yeah. lot. I think she went into Chili. Samu's room. No, 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 but I think I closed it. No, but she can push it now. I know. She knows how to lock, yeah, pick Open locks. Open locks, yeah. Um... OG1 Kenobi was saying, oh yeah, Sophie's light effects are very cool. She has a Matisse meets Hockney look to her style. 
I love it. Okay, yeah. yeah And yeah. Carla was saying, Sophie's paintings are beautiful. I see that too. OG One Kenobi, the Hogni reference. Uh, and OG One Kenobi was saying, Carla, yes, it has a simple but very engaging look to it that you know is very hard to, hard to pull off. Very tough. Yes, she's great. Um, so Van Sant was saying, looks like the same kind of thing as the Alkid from uh, Newton. Was it Newton? Mm. Carla Gómez dice Qué bonito el pelaje de Chili Si mi Chili es divina ¿Cierto mi Chili? Creo que lo heredó de mí Pasa que ya no existe en, en... Mi pelaje se fue ya mm. Pero... ¿Era así? Era así ¿Eso dicen? Eso dicen las leyendas <ríe> sí. Era cuestión de leyendas ¿Que eras Meryl? Era Meryl No Meryl joda No Que ahí no había nada eh, a ver. <clears throat> eh, so Guy Bailey was saying, I have started painting oils on non-primed paper and I love it. Oh, nice. Thanks so much for making it seem like a sensible thing to do. Love the control and the fact that it dries so quickly. That's awesome. And they were also saying hello both. So hey, Guy. Um, and that is so cool. Yeah, that there's a lot of people that hate it. Yes, like, like a, I mean, it's a it's a technique. It's not there's there's nothing objectively better or worse than anything else. No, but it's great uh, to try it at least yeah, to know I if you like so. it or not. So, mm. uh, Vato, who's saying, Nicolas, I don't Vato. know if you have much experience with digital painting. Some, but do you have any suggestions for how to make the digital painting appear more traditional? Oof. Um, less layers and, um, there are brushes that are just a little more textured and perhaps more direct that, that can quite help. But I've, I feel that if you, um, if you paint traditionally, like your approach won't really change. That was at least my little bit of experience when I was, um, uh, painting digitally. Um, uh, I you know, I painted everything in like a single layer. I would paint, well, I would have like a background layer, which I used for texture. So it was like a, a, um, a scanned bit of like linen texture with like a bit of paint with like little drips of paint or whatever, just to give it like a more painterly feel. But then after that, it was, it was all just like straight painting. And um, I don't remember if I, I had opacity turned to like 90 or 85 or something just so you can get slight transparencies. But I, I remember using two brushes. So one that was uh, vertical and that was very, um, it was like organic looking brushes. It was very um, uh, kind of uneven. And, and, it, and then I had like another one that was horizontal. Nowadays, so, the opacity you can, I mean, if you use Procreate, for example, yeah, you have like a super wide range of uh, brushes that have like a different opacity on its own. Yeah. So, because I, I think you did that on Photoshop. Yes. I, some when time I, when ago. When I painted, so, it was Photoshop, yeah. With yeah. like a Wacom, like a super basic mm -hmm. um, Wacom tablet. And I used brushes that a friend of mine who is probably like the most talented, um, um, like, um, color key and just like, you know, in terms of, of, uh, visual development, um, that has to do with, with color. It's probably one of the most talented people I've ever met in my life. Um, Carlos Felipe Leon, he's incredible. He is, he's for sure one of the best people in the industry. Um, He he gave me his two brushes, but he showed me how he had made them. And he was like, look, this is like super stupid. Um, and he just showed me in five minutes how to make brushes. And he was like, I use like four, like these two or three and then this other thing and that's it. And I held whatever he taught me as truth. I was like, 
unequivocal truth because he's so, so good. And he's such a tremendous like draftsman and painter also that I felt like he understood what I was hoping to get to by by painting digitally, which was trying to, you know, approach it almost like um, as if I was doing like gouache painting or something. But um, he was a, he was amazing. He was a, like an incredible teacher, I feel. I know I've told you before, but you should try to use my um, I'm iPad. Yeah, I'm scared. No, it's not like, I mean, it's not like you have to present a, like a piece at the end of the you, day. You know what it is? Can you I could, be super honest with you? That you're going to love it? Yeah, it's just, I become like obsessed with it. You can use it whenever you want. Oh, no, it's not a thing. It's just that I I fear that if I start working there, I, I'll start painting less traditionally, which... I don't, I wouldn't want to do. Uh, I hope that everyone had this um, beautiful view of Chile just standing in the um, uh -huh. arm, how do you call that? Arm the arm rest of the, the arm, arm of the rest chair. Yeah, the arm of the sofa. Yeah. He was just like picking to say hi. Oh, nice, nice. She's amazing. Rosaline Dion. Oh, la, la. Saying, Hello, Nico and Dani. Nick and Danny. Ooh. Hey, Ross, Elaine, how are you? What are you doing? What are you doing right now? How's been it's life? a little pushy. Me? Yeah, because she may be like peeing. I thought you were saying Rosalyn was pushy. And I was oh, like, she always is. Yeah, I'm going to but... block you, Nicolas. Respect the row rows. <clears throat> You know, I love that my sister was like this. Uh, it's like a rare sighting of a bird. Oh, it's it's like this um, exotic bird. It's Bigfoot. Yeah. It's like a little message, and then yeah. she's out. But I, it made me so happy to see her here. Yeah. I'm not time. forcing her her to be here all the time. I know she has to work. I mean, they always but tell us they support us, but we never see them. So Aye. never see them. Hmm. Mm. So Rosaline was saying, "Yeah, ha ha ha! I'm unpacking at the place I'm staying for March." That was Ooh. a weird statement. Ella went unpacking. What was a weird statement? Oh no! no. So, no it sounds so cool. It and, sounds and like where a globe-trotter again. Where in the world is uh, Rosaline right now? What is home going to be for Rosaline this March? Where March. is home? March Madness. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I go keen. Mm. Let's see. Mm. So we're waiting. We're all waiting for Rosalind's breath? answer. Yeah. Okay. Can't, can't be that. Oh, was I overly excited about that? Maybe. Okay, he I said. I just said. Screamed. Yeah. No, but you said something before. Oh, like, waiting yeah, yeah, yeah. on bated breath. Ah. Bated breath. Yeah, I had no idea what you were saying. Oh, it's, it's I haven't nonsense. like I wasn't even uh paying attention. Done. Like you always do. No, with my sentence and you okay. were already like shouting something. Yeah, yeah, I get so, it. So I get it. Uh please manage your vocals. <laughs> lady. Men. Um gen lady, how do you like what's the men? Gentle. Well, what did what did that do? El opuesto de... No, lady. It was lady. lady but I'm telling yeah, it to yeah. you. I was just so... referencing that. I so was just trying to reference that. You would be lado, lady o. Ladle, yeah. Ladle. Uh, Rosaline Dion was saying, "I came back to Utah. Oh, my cool, two cool. sons live here, and I'm going to bug them for a few weeks. Very. Oh, nice. that's. I'm sure they're very happy to have you. Mm, that's what they say. Uh, no, I mean. 
I'm sure that maybe they're going to be like, okay, yes, mom, but of course we love having our parents our Rosalind. close. Uh, Vato was saying, thanks for the tips, Nicolas and Daniela. No, you're welcome, Vato. Any questions you have? Uh, we would not solve what? things because hmm? it's not like what? we solve the problems of people. Oh, but we can share problem solving. Guaranteed. We can share all the all the struggles guaranteed. together. So, or all the doubts, or all the questions, or whatever you have. Um. So. Vato was asking, Nicolas. Vato. Are you familiar with Jeff Simpson? Yes, very talented. So good. He does, uh, he does, um, like character design concept work. I think he, oh, I don't know if he still works for Ubi, for Ubisoft. Um, but his, um, his, his work, like his, I mean, his work always, but his personal work. It's uh, super creepy, um, super expressive, really, really nice. He's crazy talented. Rosalind was saying Utah has skiing, so that makes the cold almost enjoyable. Oh. <laughs> no, I have to say, again, I haven't, like, I, I have never lived in a place that mm. has... Um, yeah, you went on vacation, but yeah. it's very different to just live through but it. But I have to say... At least for vacations. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah? Yeah. I loved the very cold Oof. winter Oof. in Oof. Chicago and Michigan. Oof. I thought it was great. It was weird because I was like motivated to go out. Again, I was like visiting my sister. So maybe that's why. Mm -hmm. But I loved it. I loved it. So this is darker in my in my image, in my like reference, mm -hmm. this side is darker, uh, but there is something to that yellow that I like. Um, I think it's very strong. Like the push of it is just very, very strong. And um, so I think I'm gonna maintain it because I've been favoring sort of my, my violet in some of these areas um, and I really like it. So I am going to just, play off of that violet and, and just uh, keep that yellow off to this side also. Roslyn was saying it's so cold. I'm with Nico. Oof. Yeah, no, it's not. It's not fun. I mean, I was never in, in winters that were unsufferable. They were very cold, but it wasn't like, I mean, I, I could still walk out and catch the bus and get to work. And Well, but you went annoying. to Canada. In winter. Well, that that one, that's the coldest place I've ever been to. Like, because I don't remember Wisconsin. So and you were Maybe jeans. Wisconsin. Would... You were wearing jeans. Well, I always do, so. Terrible. But, um, now having said that, I think I can, we've talked about this, but I think I can manage cold better than, than, uh, than heat. Yeah. Just like, you know, absurd amounts of heat. I, I think just, I enjoy I both. Heat. No, I hate it. But I... I don't know, direct sunlight uh, for me is uh, troubling. I hate it. I can't, I can't deal with like no, you know, but I, humidity and heat. I mean, it's, it's too much for me. The last time that we were in a very hot place was in Rome. Yeah. It was crazy hot. Uh, it was complicated, but it was also fun. Um, Again, for vacation. Maybe because it's Rome, me, but... Yeah, and because I was like walking and knowing new places and whatever. But if it is for living, I yeah. would 100% Could you choose. imagine that being like your summer? Like the that's what your life feels like for like three months every I, year, year after year after I year after year. I always think that if I tough. had to like study, like if I had to study when I was in the university or at school uh -huh. in summer, it would be terrible for me. Oh, no. That's why it's like it, I would summer vacations just make sense. Melt yeah, no, in the no. desk. So. Mm. Do you think we can, um, do you think if I make this super sharp, it's too sharp? 
does it compete with the sharpness there? No, you know, I think I would like it because it's also the like the last part you read of the yeah. image. Let me see. So it's like a cool like ending. I wonder. I mean, it's right in the in the corner, which I mean, is at the end, supposed you, to be like a no no. But who cares? If you don't like it, yeah, you at the just end you can it. just yeah. So. Well, yeah, softening it is different than um, than the scrubbing that you get from like just putting it there, uh, you know, at the beginning and then not touching it, which is yes. very nice. Which I really like how that feels. But um, no, but let's let's do it because Rosalind was saying super sharp yes uh, Vato was saying Nicolas Vato you have to get Jeff on your conversation series I loved watching once with Stephen and Elisa oh yeah no 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 he's he, I'm I've, I've exchanged words with him I know a friend of ours um, although Jeff I think was because our friend was in Toronto but if I'm not mistaken, Jeff worked in Montreal, maybe. If I'm, I don't know. Uh, so I don't. I think they met because he was working at UB in in Toronto. But uh, Vicky, when yeah. he was working there, no, I yeah, I knew. Who but they you were met, about. Uh, and I think what, who else? I don't know if Keita. Oh shit! I Keita met him at some point too. I don't remember. I like it. Yeah? yeah? Better? I like it a lot, yeah. Yeah? It also adds to the tension that you were saying. Yeah, I like it too. Yeah. I think it's better too. Juan Delgado was saying, what about Cali? Summer the whole year. Oof. Well, it's not terrible. I mean, it's... it's You can... That's not super, super hot. So I would say it's not crazy hot. But it can be hot and humid. Yeah. Which is complicated because yeah. you then get like super sticky. Yeah, I just don't do well with sticky. No, me I'm neither. Just, I, I, was, I was genetically built for just average weather. I'm as vanilla as you can get, you know? Yeah, so well, and... I, have to, I have to accept that. <clears throat> I have to admit that that's, um, that's when they put me together, that's, those were the ingredients, vanilla. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's it. Sunburns. Vanilla extract. You're good. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I have to say, I think in Rome, my yeah. best friend was this uh, bottle I have. Yeah. Which keeps the water super cold. Yeah. Because I have to say that. Kill chili. Chili. I have Killing to say that marriage. if uh, I had to have like... Like if I have to have long walks yeah. without being able to hydrate, but hydrate with very, very cold water, it would be very hard for me. Yeah. Because that has happened before. And I just like, I feel like I can't function. It's like, no, no, it's, I'm just it's... like melted there and I can't do anything. Because when it's cold, you can layer. And of course, you can still feel the cold, but you can layer. Jeez. But when it's hot, there's just like a limited amount of layers that you can take out. Yeah. Because like even your bare skin feels like too much when it's too hot. So I don't know what she, what she has with the neighbors. She hates them. Why? I don't know. She's like a bigot, I feel. Well, I think it goes both ways. <laughs> Maybe they're like, oh, this annoying dog. Yeah, maybe it's like war has been uh, declared maybe they're gonna get a cat oh stupid people <laughs> now our neighbors are i don't we don't even have a relationship with no but they're super nice they're she's a old i mean lady we, say and hi. we say hi they're nice and i've seen them in the in the supermarket i've seen her once they're or twice. super yeah. nice yeah she's nice what do you want get it She's super spoiled. She loves cuddles. Yeah, that's all you. Yeah, all no, you. you cuddle her too. I do. I mean, you even like rock her like a baby. Yeah. 
doesn't seem to work, but I feel like... Uh, it kind of does, to be honest, which is terrible because then you have to do it more. But I think it does. It does work. Mm. Um, Vato <sighs> was saying, my dog is the same if someone walks past he can't stop barking. Because it's funny, because when you walk in the park with Chili, she's super chilled. I mean, she can... Like, she never barks outside. No, no, no. She she only gets the courage with a closed door. Yeah. Or she gets protective, maybe. Because when she's outside, she's, like, super loving and playing with all the dogs. People can, like, approach her to say hi, and she would, sli she would like, sniff them. Yeah. But she's more a dog, a dog dog, nor not a person dog. Like she loves us and the people that are close to her, but she prefers to play with dogs in the park yes. than to be cuddled by humans. Yes. Uh, but when she's here, she barks. Yeah, she when goes crazy. She hears someone in the elevator. So it's like two different personalities. No, she just knows. She just knows herself, I feel. Uh, so Vato was saying, yes, when someone walks past by the door, I guess they have this instinct of protecting their home. Yes. You know what I was reading about? Because when Chile was uh, smaller, that yeah. we couldn't walk her. Yeah. Uh, we would take her in her little house that she has. Yeah. And she would bark like crazy. Yes. And I read about this, I think it was last week. Okay, what did you read? I was reading that that's because they feel that that's their home. Oh. So they're protecting their, their home. home. Exactly. So it's like when you try to put your hand in their food, oh, it's like they're yeah. protecting what is their food. So uh, in the article that I was reading, I think it was a, a vet uh, that was saying that you should have a bag to take her out, but not the one that she associates as her home. Oh, okay. Because then she's always going to be super protective. Okay. And it's going to be like terrible for them if you, for example, go to a reunion with friends and yeah. you put her bed there because then she's going to feel like I have all these people that I don't know and I not only have to get to know them or be with them, but I have to protect my house. Oh, so it's it's great. It was great. Yeah. Okay. So we have to buy another. Oh well. Back to oh, carry her. There we go. Another expense, chili. Thank another you. One. Thank you for that. I'll buy whatever she needs. Always. Oh my god. Happily. I would stop eating, the things I love to eat. Uh huh. For her, not matcha. No, yet matcha. <laughs> not too, too much. Nah. I was joking. No, yeah, yeah, she was joking, chili. Don't, don't ever No, ask you know me. I mean, I'm always looking for things she need. I know, I like, know. You're very generous. I get this little treat for you. You're very, very She's generous. She's like, yes, more food. I more. Food. Um, uh, Daniel Ira, I think I'm almost me. done. I love it. And I have to say the very sharp line. Yeah. I love it. Because also it marks, I think it like makes a stronger enunciation of the diagonal yeah like the diagonal reading i love it you do, do you know this little spot i like it do you know well it's Can not you a name i'm not me to i'm about to introduce little spot? you i'm about to introduce you to uh <laughs> please please to cameron yeah i'm sorry cameron i was being rude i know um yeah cameron you says are, you suck you are very cool cameron uh, i think you add to the tension you were unintentional oh. Uninten completely unintentional. Yeah. Unintentional Cameron. Yeah. That's the name of the painting. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give it to you. Unintentional Cameron. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I love it. I think it. it's great. I love it. I love it, it too. <laughs> On that note, I think we're going to leave it here because uh, I don't know. I like the. I also like it. I had no idea where this was kind of going to go, but um, I feel it. It's an interesting painting. It's it just, is very cool. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. It's fun to try and 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 um, mm. 
determine the the path of a painting when it's not really clear in your mind and you are trying to solve it you know in in one sitting so or at least you're trying to to have it um have its direction set in one sitting which is what we try to do here um so i didn't know where it was going at the beginning i initially i realized how abstract it was going to be and as soon as i realized how abstract it 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 was going to be i noticed that i had to be careful with my color choices so that they wouldn't just step on each other's toes so that things would um, serve as conventions um, of sorts. So, you know, her, your body is is kind of, um, uh, there are greens, but I would say it's like leaning towards a violet as a whole, which had to be a little bit different from, from how, you know, loosely organic the face would feel, which had to feel a little bit different. And that's why I left that red for the hair, just so it would be different enough and then the hand, I, I only needed that, to be honest. Like, I don't need to paint more than that for the hand. I think there's enough enough information there to, for it to work as a shape. But if I put more detail, it, it'll just stick out like a sore thumb. So that we want, it, we want to create tension because the shape is there, but we don't want unwanted attention, you know, up there because that would, you know, that would totally... Um, that would totally make the uh, painting out of balance. So, um, I think it's nice. It's, it's, it's strange for sure, but it's uh, it's very nice. Working with this palette is is um, feels like a discovery. Well, it feels like how working with any palette should feel like, but um, particularly for me, it just it's always quite um, interesting. Just a journey and even more today that I really didn't have a plan for this. So um, I think it's nice. I think it's nice. When I mentioned George Pratt, I, I, I really feel like at some moments I was channeling a little bit of what he does so freely and what he's so tremendously good at. Um, so I'm, I'm happy about that, that it's, it can be like a little, um, there is like a um, hidden homage to him that was not intended, but, that was more like uncovered while I was working. So, but um, yeah, I think it's nice. I like it. Yeah, I like, I like it. it a lot too. It has a nice feel to it. So yeah. I'm pretty Unintentional happy. Unintentional camera. Oh yeah, no, I remember the, uh, I like the title actually. I like it too a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like it. I actually really like it. Yes. Very proud of you. I think it's the first one. Thank you. I'm very proud of me. <laughs> Not of you. <laughs> no, I think you've named more paintings. Of than course yeah. I've named a lot I of paintings. I said the first one, but no, you've named a ton of yeah. paintings. But I liked I liked this one. Thank you. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you everyone for joining us. I especially like that Cameron is not a good name for that spot. Oh no. It's a terrible. It's a terrible. One. Like yeah. I'm sure that if if we if did it like If you see that spot, it's not a so Cameron. So not a Cameron. No. I know I know I would that say if, more of a Luigi. Oh, let's it's not even like But it is Cameron. It's Cameron, so don't even look for another name. But I think that if we had given it like a second thought, like we could have gotten to a better place. But that's why it's I love that it's just like a Cameron. you know train wreck. It's a little I bit mean, of a train wreck. The title. Cameron was there without wanting to be there. It's unintentional. Cameron was there before we its name. knew it, he was there. Yeah. Nice. He, yeah. So. So. Let's say goodbye. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna go get Chili's uh, medicine. And oh, she needs her it. What time? A is lot it? at six. No. Okay, in half an hour. Okay. Yes. Uh, so thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for all your love, always. Yes. Thank you for all your good wishes for my dear Chili. Yeah, she'll Chili be okay. Beanie. Yes. We'll, we'll be. We're gonna we'll give be her very extra careful cuddles. with uh, all, with all the stuff she needs, but she'll be okay. I guess. Yes, and uh, we are always very happy to have you here. So if you're new here, maybe you can. Do you want to grab her? No, no my hands are okay. dirty, so. Oh, she wanted. She was like, yes. Oh, uh, no, no, Chili. Give me a second. I'll wash my hands. Oh, yeah, she understands. Yeah. Uh, if you're new actually, here. She understands a ton of English, actually. Yeah? Yeah. You said actually twice, so you're the one that does not kind of understand yeah, English. She's like, dude, you're using actually too much. Yeah, you dumb hey, bilingual Watch it, person. Chili. Watch it. Yeah, less food tonight, Chili. 
So, uh, <laughs> she wants to go with you. I know, but I can't. Uh, I can't. What was I saying? If you're new here, yeah, and if you want to join more of our live streams, okay. it would be great if you uh, consider subscribing. Also, we've been uploading shorts. Yeah. Um, uh, jean shorts. <laughs> oh God, it's getting worse. So we are uploading shorts. Uh, kind of revisiting the edited videos. Yes. And the live streams too. So if maybe you can't join for the whole stream, or you just want more content. More. We have the shorts, so you can enjoy those too. Uh, we have Instagrams. It is uh, right here. So the first one's my Instagram. The second one is Nicolas' Instagram. We have a web page, Our yeah. Painted Lives. And we have a TikTok. Oh, we do? Our Painted Lives. How are and we doing? we reached 1,000. No way. That's great. I mean, we had like oh my 40. God. So let me say the exact number. My mother number. said we would never. <laughs> my mother... Yeah, she doesn't even have a TikTok, so. Uh, 1,051. Oh, followers. we're past 1,000. So, Oof, I mean. Solid. Yeah. That is crazy. You to jump into that bus when That's it's crazy. Feel I mean, our content is moving. so. I don't know what I'm saying. Like, you know, low hanging fruit. Our content? Yeah, I think so. What? But a uh, 1,000? So, I amazing. am. I'm sorry. I am creating the content. So oh, it's amazing. Something. It's incredible. Yeah. And it's your painting. We are because so of you. You are insulting yourself. <laughs> so thank you, everyone. Thank you. And oh, so. What? Carla was saying, wow, didn't know about TikTok. Oh, it is, Carla, it is, please. Um, yeah. It Come is on. a platform. Oh, Carla, Jesus TikTok Christ. is a great platform for people that like video. Okay. So our painted lives are TikTok if you want to check it out. And that's it. Thank yes. you everyone for joining us and we'll see you soon.